Ha 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 You speak as though I have conquered death. I live death every day. I am surrounded by it. Smothered by it. Look at you now. You would have everlasting life. seek to defy death, yet you cannot even defy sleep, and our like sleep is to death. Hey, it's the Diaz Brothers from Zay Comics. And we're back with our latest campaign, bringing together all the greatest artists and talent that CG has to offer. So take a look at- Whoa! I'll take it from your Diaz Brothers. What up, people? It's your boy, Mr. CG. Allow me to be your tour guide on the biggest, bounciest beach party book in CG history. CG Vacation! <laughs> We got bodacious beach spots springing up from the biggest properties in indie comics. Baby, you don't need those guns when you got these guns, you know what I'm saying? Featuring art from the industry's heavy hitters, as well as the best new CG talent. 
I'm talking Dale Keown, Billy Tucci, R.T. Bear, Shaft and Jenny, Renny Draws, and many more rubbing ink on hot properties you love, like Pit, Sheep, First Net, Sovereign Wolf, Cyber Frog, Chanu, The Lucent, Downcast, <laughs> I could go on and on. And I will! We got Andy Smith, Kelsey Shannon, PTP, Kaylee, Love Presti, Monster MD, Rage Tully, Graveyard Shift! Yo, on CG Beach, we even got the weeds covered. Or, uh, uncovered. <laughs> it's gonna be more than 50 pages of pinup perfection, like Penumbra over here. <laughs> hey, Mamacita, I was just walking by, and I couldn't help but notice. Holy crap, what the hell is that? We're all gonna die! Why are you posing right now? So what are you waiting for? Take a little break and get away with all your faves. You know you deserve it. Back CG vacation on Indiegogo today. Later, gang. We got Dahl, Robertson, Joe Ball, Sontag, Neri MTS, Lawless, Bancroft, Romero, McMahon, Dalton, Casanova. Just too many to mention, dude. No sparrow does this word not sound like the death bird culling the living dead at dawn. It is the name both ghouls and demons dare not say, for they know it means death for the undead. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome to the Waffle Lodge. My name is Shanth and Jetty. This is Shanth and Jetty Art. Pull up a chair, pull up a booth. The waffles are ready. We make everything to order here just for you. And thank you for being here. I'm working on Nosferu, the Crypt Walker. It is coming along beautifully. I have been just cranking on this book. And it is great to see you guys here. 1.19 in the morning, so it's time to get going, right? This is when we get started. Uh, my, my long suffering wife said to me recently or tonight, she goes, don't stay up too late, dear. And I was like, haven't we been married long enough for you to know that that is going to just happen? Let's see what we've got here in the chat. We've got some fine people in chat. We've got micro up first. It is great to see you, my friend. Hold on a second here. I feel like I need to put on my baseball cap because I need to, you know, tip my hat when I see people. We have got Bretsky the Great Salute. Salute indeed. I tip my hat to you, my friend. We've got D-Wag, my main man, my can of spam. It's all about money. I'm going to tip my hat to you, brother. It's good to see you. And thank you again for sending me that message the other day. Really put a smile on my face. Um, yeah, it's nice to hear good things. Let me tell you that, guys. I appreciate it. And it's nice to um, 
it's nice to make artwork for great people and make great comic books. And that is what we're here to do. And I can tell you this, honestly, uh, no Sparrow is going to be an outstanding, beautiful comic book to read and enjoy. So thank you guys for backing it. Check it out. Keep getting the word out. And I'm going to keep getting the word out here. We've got Stephen Rockwood dropping links like it's going out of style, man. He is dropping links like Oscar Meyer. And I got to tell you, man, it's appreciated. Uh, Jeremy Burtz is here. Hail to you, my brother. I hope you're doing well this evening. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, let's see who else we've got here. We've got the real Sean Crummel, not to be confused with a fake Sean Crummel. We don't do fake here. That's the reality of it, okay? This is the real deal. The real Sean Crummel. It is great to see you. Yeah, Reaper Raid. Hail Joe Sontag. How you doing, brother? It's good to see you streaming. I love the stuff you talk about art-wise. And uh, yeah, it's great stuff. And so, yeah, d -Wag, thank you for uh, tipping your hat to the man. I tip my hat to him as well. Uh, CG Vacation. Check it out. Mighty Geek Studios. Great to see you. Good evening to you, my friend. Timmy Mello. Always good to see you in the chat, my friend. Probably dip out soon. Get some sleep. Hey, listen, man. You got to get that sleep. It's important um don't worry i've got the night shift my friend so if you got to pass out go pass out is how we do it sometimes hello hello hey what's up american comics company you're always in good company when american comics company is in the house we've got sean fair schneidley it's good to see you my friend hello darlings hello to you my friend good to see you now that looks like a serious gladiator right there man that is what that is in that drawing uh, let's see who else we've got past master dan it is great to see you past master dan yeah i heard you were still alive yeah, you know, a lot of people have been asking me about that. They're like, you know, because I just had a birthday and like, how do I feel about it? You know, and from my perspective, it's very much about uh, this. You blew it! I am still alive! <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man. That's just how it is. That's just how it is. That's what we do. I am still alive. Know that. McGregor will Jay, it is great to see you, my friend. Hail to you. I tip my hat to you, my friend. We've got my brother, Lord Crackhead33, the man bringing the dragons, the man bringing the thunder, recently had a video go over 100,000 views. And that is the greatness that we all know he is destined for. That is what we expect. So I can only say to you, Jeremy, I am pleased, but I am not surprised. Never forget that, my friend. Let's see who else we've got here. We have got uh, American Comics Company. Who we've got? What up, peeps? That's right. That's right. He knows. He knows the score on that trailer. Mo Biggs is here. I doff my cap to Mo Biggs. That is how it's got to be. Uh, Mo Biggs, ultimate respect. Mo Biggs, much love. Yeah, awkward indeed. It is. It was a little awkward, right, with uh, the the later uh, insertion, dare I say, of uh, Cyber Fraud. Yeah, that sounds terrible. Let's uh, let's not do that. So let's see here. We have got uh, Arrogant Ape here, double A. That's right. But I will tell you, always a triple A in my book, my friend. That is the way it is. Five star all the way. Uh, let's see. Cranberry Langers, great to see you. Hail to you, Cranberry Langers. And it's great to see you in the chat, my friend. Indeed, hail chat. Mo Biggs is just like, hey, everybody. Boom, dropping it. Mighty Geek Studios again. I'll have my usual. Let me tell you something. Chicken and Waffles is coming right out to you, my friend. Ooh, don't trust that chef. He's an alien. I'm sure of it. That's absolutely right. He is. Uh, that's why I have it say, um, uh, gosh, what? Did I, oh, Vinny S is his name. A little nod to where he's from. Uh, let's see if you look at his uh, tag. For any of you guys who are watching, uh, let me just make sure I've got everybody here. What's up, Scott Richard Studio? Scotty Richard Studio. It's great to see you, Scotty Richard Studio. Uh, did you make all of those trailers? Pretty awesome. I did not make all those trailers, but I will tell you this. Um, I. Um, let me see. Did I make any? I made my trailer, obviously, uh, and I didn't make any of those other trailers. Actually, the fine artists made them, but I do a lot of video making. I will tell you that. Uh, certainly, while uh, they sleep, we work. That kind of thing. Darren Wagner, what's up, Stephen Rockwood? We have got forty percent Zed here. Hail forty percent Zed. It is great to see you. I like my coffee like I like my women. Hot Guatemalan and all over my lap. Well, listen, Eric and Ape, we aim to please, my friend. We aim. So please, we got 33 people in here. If you could do me a favor and hit that like, it would help. If you are not subscribed already, please do subscribe. Um, because it is very, very important for us as we battle this insane algorithm. I'm getting hyped for the new show, brother, at Darren Wagner. There you go. D-Wag's dropping new shows. That's the way it is, guys. Dropping wisdom, new shows, and love. Know it. At least the fake Sean Crummel gave me a wrench. Ooh, snap. That is rough. That is rough. 
Uh, let's see here. Nornrad2 Turbo, great to see you. Hello, hello. The Voyager 47, great to see you as well, my friend. I'm glad you are here. Let's see who else. Are we almost there? My stars and garters. Hunch the Dirty Roofer in the house. Thank you, Hunch the Dirty Roofer. It is great to see you here. Happy belated birthday. I will always say thank you for a happy belated birthday, my brother. Um, all birthday wishes are appreciated, no matter when they roll in. The groomsman is here. Look out, Shoff. Do you have soundproofing in your room asking for sleeping family? No, they have to deal with it. That's what that's called. You know, that is what that's called. They have to deal with it, groomsman. That's the way it is. Plus, the, I swear those people would sleep through me being murdered. It's just the way it is. Uh, yeah, no, sir, is going to be amazing. Let me tell you that. That is going to be the case, indeed. I'm sorry about missing the last few live streams, but I've been working on character designs and the story. Well, listen, never apologize for that, for my comic book. We got Dan Lawless in the house. Gross Point Dank. What's up, Dan Lawless? Hi, Shop. Hi, everyone. Hello, Dan. Uh, an outstanding artist in his own right, keeping it real and keeping it going. So it is great to see all of you guys. Yeah, Dan is the man. Let me say that again. Dan is the man. So, yeah, we finished up CG Team earlier. We were... Um, doing our thing over there on that channel great show if you haven't seen it you can always catch it uh once it reposts or whatever um and i said to myself i've got some painting that i want to get to and i've got a werewolf to paint so as you guys know uh this is one of the characters from nosferro this is Greylock, and this is a really kind of a, a special and fun scene that i'm painting i will say this that i recently did a uh i recently did a piece for <laughs> shant the living white noise uh, first of all, identify as a noise of color. So get it right, brother. Uh, <laughs> um, Anthony Potato 125, it is great to see you, my friend. Uh, and I hope you are doing well. And uh, thank you for coming in here and uh, hanging with us. It's always good to see you, you know. Uh, let's see here. Uh, how to draw comics with Dan Laws. Hail and D. Cranberry Langers. Hello, hello, hello. Everybody's saying hello. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That shot looks like it came from Peter Pan. There you go. That's part of it, man. That is part of what Groomsman knew. I knew I was going to get you. I knew I was going to get you with that one, man. But uh, but what do you call it? Uh, yeah, when I'm working on this stuff, and I've been working on the latest pages of Nosferro, when I did that Visions piece for John Malin, and again, thank you, John Malin, for that opportunity. It was, uh, it was great working on that. Um, when I did that piece for John Malin, I really did have um, a breakthrough. I think it was because it was a, a technically challenging piece. I'm moving this over because I want to be able to uh, get you guys a better view. I don't want my hand blocking it. But when I was working on that piece, one of the things that, that I realized was that, you know, it just, it was one of those natural things. I had a breakthrough in terms of texture. And when I came back to work on my Nosferro pages, I've been doing a hell of a lot less penciling and kind of just having the confidence to just go in there with the brush keeping things really, really loose and expressive um, and then getting that detail in there I want without having to do a ton of erasing. What's great about that is um, it saves time, but it also makes the work just, it's so much stronger because um, I don't know, it just has that kind of fluidity that I'm used to getting in my paintings, but has always been a little bit tricky to maintain when you're doing sequential stuff. And that's the key. That's the key. That's what we're after here, man. We want to make we want to make this uh, as Bruce Lee would say. We want this to flow like water, people. And uh, I want this work to be something that stands the test of time. And I think Nosfero, Nosfero, what's going to be great about this book is an it's an introduction to a world and it's an introduction uh, to a character to several characters. But this is make no mistake. This is a character that is a superhero. That's a pulp character. That's iconically designed and it's, it's a pulp story in broad strokes that I hope will be the first of many stories for this character. So jump on now and do not miss it. Yeah. Shot the living white noise, canceling out the irritating noise of the world. Well, you never know. That was cool of Malin to let you uh, stream it. Yeah, absolutely. It was, it was very cool. It was very generous of him to do it because John likes to keep things under wrap and I respect that. You know, I've said this about John before. I'll say it again. John was the first mainstream artist over the wall in Comicsgate. And I think in that way, he is um, one of the most important artists that we have in the indie scene. When it comes to image comics, I think Rob Liefeld was the first person over the wall there, publishing through Malibu first, then designing the image eye. That stuff matters, man. 
And, you know, of course, you know, we all know all of the contributions that Ethan has made. And I think there's so many great artists in CG, you know, right now, no pun intended. Also check out Michael Bancroft, uh, CG now. Um, but it's um, John has always talked about, you know, how important comic skate is and how fragile it is. Good to see you, my friend. Uh, you're going to like the name of this character, by the way, with this name. Um, <laughs> just to just to point that out. What's up, Phil? It's great to see you. But John was really interested in building something that would last, something that we would be able to, you know, have and build. And is it always going to be the exact same thing? No. Is any company the same thing? As we watch Marvel and DC um, in the death throes of their former selves, I think it's been a long time. It's been a long time coming. But I will say this, is that independent, an independent strategy for how to actually make a living doing comic books is something that we've all been seeking. And there are people who have pointed out and, um, and given us examples of how to go about that. And I think John is very important in that way. So for him to break protocol on his typical practices was not something that I, um, I thought I took lightly and it was something I really appreciated. And it's the same thing. I mean, you get opportunities to do things every now and again that are, um, that, you know, appreciation goes a long way in making yourself have a better, you know, time of it, better time of work. You know, yeah, it does indeed. Yo, yo, indeed. Yeah. Nosferu has the potential to last. Yeah, it does actually. Um, that style is timeless, like classical music. Yeah, this is a thing, guys. This comic book is, um, this comic book isn't like uh, modern appliances, as my um, repairman always says. It's not built to break. This comic book is built to last. And this is a, a book that I'm looking at to where, um, you know, it's the first book of a character and it is a self-contained story that will continue, but it is a story that is the first story. Like you're not going to get to a cliffhanger at the end of this and go, oh, what's going to happen? You're going to get to a resolution because I want this story to be something that people can read, you know, and they can read it and they get, you know, something out of this version or this story before we jump on to the next story, which will be self-contained. A lot like the shadow, a lot like the classic pulps. And I just think that, you know, from my perspective, the more pages I see coming together and the more the artwork jumps up in quality, the more I look at this stuff and I say, um, yeah, don't if you miss out on the first printing of this book, um, you're missing it. You're going to miss something that is, I think, going to be um, something you regret because it's that it's that good. It's that solid and of a story. And it is, um, how do I word this? It is not formulaic, but it definitely is true to the muse of what comics and pulps are. It paints in broad strokes, gives you heroism and it gives you adventure. And much like when, um, you know, George Lucas was creating Indiana Jones and he was looking at Doc's, uh, Doc Savage and he was looking at, you know, um, you know, Casablanca. So it was like fedoras meet Doc Savage. I've been very true to Pulp's roots. And I think about things like masks, heroism, all of that stuff. Um, and, and that's a big part of it. Uh, Dan Lawson chat saying, Shant, would you like some company? Nobody, nobody in the chat wants to see you on my stream, Dan. Sorry to tell you that. If people wanted to see Dan Lawless on this stream, they'd put ones in the chat. I don't see any ones in the chat. So I don't believe that people want Dan Lawless on this stream. There, I said it. There's no ones in the chat. It's just, so clearly this is not what the audience wants. So I'm sick of, of Dan pretending like people want to see him in this stream when I don't see any ones in the chat. That's how the hell that works. Sorry, folks. Oh, shit. I stand corrected. The groomsman put a three in there. I sort of feel like that's some kind of disgusting tripod joke, and you should be ashamed of yourself. You're a father um, and a pillar of your community. Anyway, you slice it, I'm going to have to invite Dan Lawless because that is what we do. I don't know if you know what kind of show we're running here, but this is a customer service business. We're here to chew bubble gum and sell comic books, and we're all out of bubble gum. Do you people understand? Uh, holy cow, we've got the professor here, Antoine Dennison. I doff my cap to Antoine Dennison, by God. And I think it's time for me to send this link to Dan Lawless because this is what we do here in Comicsgate. Do you people understand? Am I coming in loud and clear? I think you can hear me knocking. And I've got me and I've got Dan Lawless. 
with me. That's what you have to remember, people. That's what you have to remember. It's been, it has been, it has been sent. There it is. Deal with it, baby. What's up, Enrique? It's great to see you, my friend. I also want to make sure that I catch anybody who snuck in here when I wasn't looking. We got Antoine Dennison in the house. We've got Snake Euler right there. It is good to see you, Snake Euler. I hope you are doing well. Yeah, and Sean, you're absolutely right. One will do. You know, one will absolutely do. Is that like some secret password that they suggested to you? Because I bet you that's your Amazon suggested password. Everybody type in uh, the groomsman at gmail.com to Amazon real quick. Type that in and see if you can buy stuff on his dollar. What's up, Mason W? It is great to see you, my friend. Yeah, if you like Doc Savage, you will love Dan, who many have dubbed Cock Savage. That's absolutely true. People say that. Um, you're not the first. You won't be the last. Know that, people. We are in the Dan Lawless business. That's how it is. Uh, I am actually currently launching several Indiegogos of Dan Lawless projects. He has not agreed to draw. I've put his name on him. I've put his social security in there. Um, everything. It's 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 vaguely criminal. I don't know why the hell I would confess to it. You know, on a live stream. Nonetheless, here is Dan oh. telling me what he thinks about it. What's up, brother? Hey, how you doing, man? I'm doing great, brother. It's good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you. <laughs> I just I just got off a, a live stream with you know the players that uh, that's absolutely right. You were on there with my brother Gabe, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, absolutely, man. So that was yeah, you know, man. That, that's I love that show. I love it. Uh, it it's, it's just uh, I look forward to every week. Just yeah. I mean, you don't get to talk shop. What you know? It's like so. It's great opportunity. So yeah, good people, man. Good people. You know. Yeah, Gabe. It's, uh, Gabe yeah, it's has a, a gift of gab. He does have it, man. Gabe is <laughs> Gabe is the man. You know, and it's it's a shame though that you know there are people on there with projects I'm not at all excited about, like Aaron Lepresti. I mean, yeah, I'm not Thursday excited lunch. about Race of God at all. I mean, it's it's uh, got Nosferatu in it. It's got westerns. It's got gunslingers and I'm, yeah, I'm just kidding. I cannot wait for that project, Aaron. I know. Uh, I love the I first really, book. You know, it's 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 like sometimes like if a project isn't good, you don't know, you know, just don't really say anything. <laughs> <But> <laughs> I, You've been really quiet about Nosferatu. Yeah. Um, so what the hell, man? What is this? You come into my house, yeah. and then oh well, we'll get past it. We'll squash this. Well, I haven't read it yet. I got you. Got to you know, send me the uh, the preamble or whatever the uh, preview yeah, copy. Man. Absolutely right. Yeah, the preview copy is only twenty five dollars on Indiegogo. Um, the, the <laughs> well, I got it. But I know you did. I'm teasing. I'm teasing, Dan. I know you did. My God, you never have to answer that question. So what up to, strange, before I came on, something said something about something Doc Savage. Be, or do I not yeah. want to know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, well, creator on comics, Dan. Get your mind out of the gutter. It's COC. I mean, it's, it's you know, it's it, just because in your mind, I'm guessing it was pronounced like they do in New England, cock. But what it really was was creator on <laughs> comics. And by the way, for anybody who has any questions about caulk, if you've got, you know, a leaky tub or anything like that, caulk will always, you know, take care of that. So make sure you get some. They make a lot of different kinds right now. Um, so tell me this, man. Um, how is work coming on the Doc, Doc Savage book that you didn't agree to, to draw? Is that going well? or Oh, no? absolutely. <laughs> Got oh, it right man. over there on the table. You got it right over there, man. That is that is what it is, man. But no, the pages you were showing me, dude, those were looking awesome. Last time you were on here, man. Yeah, the, the uh, um, Kent Menace stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um, I am doing great. a pinup for Black Terror, for Vaughn's Black Terror. Oh my right gosh. Now. So that's, that that's sounds awesome. a lot of fun. And I'm yeah. doing a, uh image for um, uh, Camel Moon's. Uh, heels and boots and heels. I remember so, when uh, he found it. out you were an artist. That was exciting. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's yeah. kind of weird, but sometimes you just, you, you think, oh, don't they know? Like, as I said to you before, don't these comics yeah. gay people all talk? No, they don't. No. no. The, the only time we really talk is when we're on these shows. Yeah, and so you guys it's like, know. it's like, a, you know, there's a, it's funny because there's so many shows that, that I, uh, what's it? Camel. You degenerates. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you want the link, Campbell, you troublemaker. It's good to see you, brother. I hope you're doing well. Look, I, I watched the I watched the Jack show and, and uh Kelsey would come on and, and they'd start discussing yeah. people and like I'm like 
I know all. I, I'm like Kelsey, don't you know who that is? You know, like I know it because I'm watching all the show. I know more than they know. Yeah, about, <laughs> but you know the the real the people involved in the in the movement, like because I'm watching all. You know, when I'm I, when I'm working and stuff. So yeah, I just kind of put it on. And I used well, to listen you know, to talk radio, and that for the same reason, just to hear that human voice and just to hear that you know that little human connection when you're working like this in the middle of the night and stuff. It's yeah, you really kidding. really nice. So. Yeah, man. I mean, I think one of the craziest things about it, and and we were talking about this a bit on CG Team, and we continue to talk about it. Wait, hold on a second. I got to say this. Uh, how's your father? It is great to see you. Heels and boots, boots and heels. That's the way we roll. And John, it is always great to see you, John. I hope you are doing well, brother. Um, yeah, the thing I think that is is big for people in terms of how we do this is that we're all working so hard. We're working 24 hours a day. You start to miss streams more and more. And you start to, because you're working, you know? And so if I'm, you know, one email away from 360 says Camel Moon, I, Camel, I guarantee you we can make that happen. You know, we can get you that last email. I think Dan hasn't signed up for Hills, for, uh, not Hills, for uh, Heels and Boots. Boots and, boots heels. and Heels. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Have you signed up for it yet? I think so, yeah. Double check, man. Go to your alternate email address. Come on. I'm Camel pretty sure I did. For emotional reasons. That's I'm right. I'm almost certain I did. Yeah. yeah, I know you did. I'm <laughs> sure you did too, brother. Well, you know, well, actually, sometimes you do forget. So it's like you know, there's, there's a lot of campaigns happening and stuff. And you well, I don't know if you heard. Uh, there's a new kind of illness going around right now uh, in CG. And it's called I Swore I Backed That. Uh, yeah. And I Swore <laughs> I Backed That. Uh, really strikes a lot of of the older members of CG like ourselves in particular, um, particularly when it comes to our um, when it comes to our friends books that we promote, talk about. Like my favorite one is when I get to um, I go to go. I know I backed that, and then I get to it. And it's I get to an email when I do a search says, "Would you like to complete your contribution?" <laughs> like no. <laughs> Well, you know, oh. some some of these books I've I've worked on. I mean, I, and oh, I and I and I just yeah. assume, oh, I I did a pinup for that book. They they'll just send me the copy. Like, no, <laughs> I have yeah, to buy yeah, my yeah. own copy. You know. <laughs> well, unless it's John Malin, John Malin will send you a library of books uh, if you do stuff for him. Like Phil and everybody I know who's worked with. Yeah, Malin Phil has sent me a bunch. Yeah, photos of books. Well, I think Phil. Uh, and Phil, you can come in here if you have any questions. Phil, what is this sadness about? For heaven's sake, what, did, was someone mean to my Phil? <laughs> What's going on here, people? Come on now. Yeah. Um, but Phil, I will tell you this: Phil, um, Phil is is definitely um, learning from from the master, from the coach, and really getting that stuff taken care of and sending out a lot of stuff. And he is he's a machine. Um, I love the writing that Phil's doing. And yeah. uh, now that I know his birthday is like the day after mine, him and Ethan have the same birthday. Um, it's, it's, it's intensified things knowing he's a fellow Virgo. Not that I know how any of that shit works, but. Hey, can is. I take a second? Just to, uh, thank John, you know, on, on players, uh, yeah. John's always in our chat. He's always yeah. putting the links into everything. Yep. John, I great. always try to Ail make John. a point to forget him. And I forgot to, at the, at the end of the last show, I forgot. to Ail thank Jay him. Lee. So John, yeah. thank you so much uh it, it's it, you know i i feel i always feel bad if i forget to thank because i just I'm, I'm all about that i want to thank for people who are helping us out you know and so <laughs> thank you very much john appreciate it yeah john thank you for everything you do we appreciate it you know great people you know it's it's you know it, it's it's a great time and sumo authority it's great to see you in here my brother thank you for being here yeah most welcome dan it's an honor yeah you guys seriously you guys are uh, and hail jay lee you guys are great because this is, uh, uh oh, Camel Moon, holy cow, 362. You guys rock. Thank you. Now only eight away from 370. Listen, Camel, you're starting to sound like an addict. Okay, you're starting to sound like that Key and Peel skit where it's like, come on, man, one more slap ass. You know, it's got a little bit. It's got a little bit of that in it. But just the same, because this is a big accomplishment, and I usually only bring this out. I only bring this out for super chats. Okay. And so, Camel Moon, you decide what you think is right with regards to that. But I'm going to try to celebrate you anyway because this is the show that we run. So here you go. Charge! <laughs> there you go. So, yeah. So, I mean, it is it is really um, – yeah, just one more hit, says John. 
You know, it's absolutely right. Uh, Art, good to see you. Uh, last few days um, have rocked with the release of the new book. Congratulations, Jay Lee. Guys, we are we are crushing it. Look at the enthusiasm here, guys. Guys, I'm one away on Nosferu the Crypt Walker to another milestone. I believe we hit uh, 460 backers with the next backer. And you guys have made that happen. So let's just keep going. Let's just keep what's making a, this thing. What's Jay bigger. Lee's uh, uh, vampire? It's a vampire book, I believe. Yes, he does the Steins. And it's yeah, just yeah. a great freaking book about monsters and, you know, classic stuff. I've got it right over there on my shelf with uh, in my horror book section, funny enough. And I just got the two hardcovers of Clint Stoker's uh, Dracula. So now I've got more books like that. But yeah, we're, we're crushing it, guys. Comicsgate is absolutely crushing it right now. And as I don't know if you guys talked about this on the Players Club, but did you hear about the numbers from Penguin Random House? The comic no. book numbers? No. Holy cow. Yeah, so we were looking at a post, um, and apparently they've got a lot of comic books in their titles that they put out every year that are selling, um, I think it was selling under or at 12 copies of the book. 12 who's who's selling 12 penguin random house and their comic book division and nice. i couldn't believe that's like your friends your first your family and friends that's i mean that's, that's not like even your gonna cover your family and friends didn't buy it <laughs> that's that's how bad it is man and i was and we were talking about that how the average comic skate book has got more support than that and like what the hell is going on man it is some crazy stuff yeah, the good news is that everybody in CG is doing 50% of Penguin. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Yeah, when you add us up, we are essentially, you know, as big as the comic divisions at places like Penguin. And that is really alarming because you start to go, well, our theories about, you know, is anyone reading these books are becoming more and more academic well, at this point. R hey, Rippa's book, it sold more than DC's whole line of books. It was Rippa. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Listen, yeah. <laughs> I, by the way, um, let's let's do uh, let's do one of my favorite movie quotes to describe who Rippa is. Uh, the uh, gentleman who was uh, with Gary Busey in Predator Two when he when uh, Danny Glover goes, "Who are you, Keys?" and this guy who was with Gary Busey grabs him and goes, "The last person in the world you want to fuck with." I think that Rippa solidified himself uh, to our dear friend, Mister Brooks. As the last person you want to fuck with. So, Do so you know, that. the funny thing is, is that, you know, these guys, their go-to is always racism and stuff. So they, they don't know what to do because the guys that they've taken on are, you know, Gabe, who's Arabic and Hispanic, and then, and then Rip, who's black. So it's like... <laughs> they have a pattern. <laughs> yeah, what, what, you know, they, he doesn't, they don't know what to do with it. It's kind of funny, you know? I they think can, you the know, they can pick on is... Ethan and go, "Oh, look at he's a white guy," uh, you know. They, but they yeah. don't know. They don't know what to do with conservative uh, uh, people who aren't white. You know. Yeah, but you know what the other thing is about it too is that you can always tell, and and it's dumb. Like a a lot, most sane people don't go out looking to like throw water on Mike Tyson on an airplane. I'd like to think that that's something that all you find people in the chat would not do. That's my hope. However. There are those occasional jackasses. And when I look at, when I think about Ethan, it's like Ethan is a great broadcaster and he's somebody who's proven that it's probably a stupid idea to go after him. You know what I mean? It's probably a stupid idea. Rippa, to me, is a level beyond that. Yeah, yeah. stupid Because Rippa <laughs> will tear a strip off of you. And that's he's a new kind of quick. stupid. Yeah, it is. <laughs> hey, LJB, good to see you in the chat. Um, Max said, good to see you in the chat as well. Um and, and it, it really is one of those things where it's like, why would you do that? Yeah, that's suicide. By yeah, it is. It is a dumb thing. Yeah, I like my teeth in my mouth. Yeah, you don't. Yeah, pigeons, uh, uh, as Mike Tyson used to fly them. Um, but you just go, what are you thinking? Like, you can tell that these people have never been punched in the face before. They've never had, and I'm not advocating anybody do that. I'm just saying, if you've grown up and been in scraps and fights, you just don't, 
you have better street smarts than that, if that makes sense. Pick your battles. <laughs> Pick your battles. And and people in CG have probably seen a lot more of that shit and know how to talk when people do you, stuff like that. You know, so, in, in Brooke's case, though, I think that I would imagine that he solidified himself with the editors that are in power in DC and Marvel. Sure. Like, yep. So it's he's actually it's it's actually a pretty good move in a way because it guarantee they now they can't let him fail. He's you know that here the too big to fail. They, they can't let him fail. They have to give him work. He knows it, and that's what you know. Sure. That's, yeah. That's I'm sure all those editors now, so. are secure in their positions. Right. And that it's, is a good way to go. Right. You know. It's, it's, yeah. Uh, I mean, if he if he believes that, I mean, I I can kind of get it. You know, like it's yeah. all right. You know. I mean, yeah, I think it's stupid, but it's uh, as far as the. Uh, um... I think. Look, I, I have to tell you this though, too. Just on on the art thing, this is the thing that I'm just as for me as an artist and for somebody who cares about this art form. Um, this is the thing. I don't understand why people. You don't have to say these people don't have to say. Oh, I'm Comicsgate. They don't have to say they hate Comicsgate. They don't have to say they love Comicsgate. They don't really have to. Like you can say, oh, they're pressured or people are pressured. It's dumb. The the thing that makes comics great, the things that makes what we're doing great is having colleagues in the art form. And it's very strange to me when I see people's work, I think about them first in terms of skill until they try to prove otherwise. It's an unforced error. I'll never see it any other way. What? People said that you had to come out and make a statement. You're an adult. Tell them, don't tell me I have to fucking talk, period. That's it. I don't have to be for or against anything. And I don't understand why these people then make the extra step. I love Comics Gate. I've been a part of Comics Gate, you know, making videos. My most recent, Rini's intro, which took me, I worked on that the morning of my freaking birthday. Oh, what's Rini's intro? Did I see that? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you saw it. It was on Comics Gate Kings. It's, uh, it was Teflon Ron's idea. Hail Teflon Ron. Hail chat. Um, is, Can you um, play it? Uh, I don't. I feel. I feel bad playing it with. Uh, yeah, I could play it technically, okay. but I. I don't want to play it because it's it's Ethan's thing and it is what it is. You know right. what I mean? Hail Maromi. I mean, I know Ethan probably wouldn't mind, but it's like and and Antoine Dennison. Good point, Dan Brooks has made himself a symbol of the establishment. That he has. Um, Young Rippa had a, a a a word for it that I believe Santa Claus says three times. Uh, so you know, there's different ways of putting it. Uh, yeah. Just play it. I want to see it. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, but uh, <laughs> he's asleep. He's not. <laughs> yeah, sure. He's asleep. Yeah, he's. He, yeah, if if Ethan or any of these guys are asleep, I'll be sorely disappointed. You know, you know? actually, I, 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 you know, he he has been having. He has a little more normal hours. It appears lately. Uh, but I, I, I feel like, uh, uh, you know, before when they didn't, when they were up all night, I'm like, what? Do you, I'm up all night. That's me. Like, well, how are you guys up all night? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If, like, if Ethan comes in the chat and says, uh, I can play it, then, uh, yeah, that's the only way that shit's going to happen. Um, <laughs> it's just what not... he doesn't know can't hurt him. Yeah. I've heard that before. <laughs> um, yeah, I've heard that tall tale, but, um, but no, it was, it was fun because, uh, Teflon Ron in the chat, who's uh, a regular here in a lot of the streams, hail Teflon Ron, uh, suggested, uh, and I was just, I want to do something that's fun. I want them all to be a little bit different. And he suggested that I go with the theme, you know, I Dream of Rini. So I went in, grabbed animation, did a new title card, did some like, did a lot of like work to try to make it something that was fun, short and to the point. And, um, you know, it worked out. I think it came out pretty good and it works well with what we've got for the others. But guys, if I can say something, you know, about my book and if I can say something about being in Comics Gate and all that other stuff, it's it's this. Um, it's about building your YouTube channel, doing things you know, to, to promote comics gate. And when I do those things, those are things to help promote comics gate. That's the purpose of doing them. Um, it's about, you know, giving your, you know, and no one is required to do anything they don't want to do, but I try to give, you know, my time to helping when I can, everybody understands I got to prioritize paid work. That makes total sense. Um, you know, to everybody, no one's ever said to me, Ethan's never said to me, hey, can you do this video? I need you to do it right now, blah, blah. He he just, you know, he's like, hey, can you do something? If I can do it, I do. But um, it's it really is about building this thing. And I, I think that um, what makes being in CG is very simple in a lot of senses is you get up in the morning and you say, what do I got to do today? I got to make a comic book and I've got to make some YouTube videos 
so that there's stuff out there. You know what I mean? So that we're, we're constantly getting in people's faces. People have heard of Comicsgate because so many people before us started talking about it. And I mean, in terms of as a publishing entity, as an independent movement, and we're probably the biggest independent movement in comics right now. Everybody knows us. Everybody yeah. knows we exist as much as it drives. Yeah, well, crazy. I kind of wonder about that. It, it, uh, the word must have gotten around. I mean, you know. Sure. Well, yeah, and they, certainly in the industry. I mean, you know, there are people who don't know who the hell Stan Lee is, obviously, you know, <laughs> in this world. Right. So yeah, yeah. it's uh, it's not like, you know, it's not, it's many, not everywhere. Not many. You know, I got to get somebody's <laughs> Thank you, Eric and Ape. I, I knew I can. I know I can always count on you guys to bring that class. Yes, indeed. Rini's book uh, is coming out, and I know Ethan's going to do a big launch for that as well. Yeah, we got, um, we in got the like chat, a bu- Sean, would bunch you, of books. Uh, uh, you would gatekeep EVS from the panel? Yes, I would. Uh, man, you picked the worst habit of Bancroft to emulate. Yeah, I would absolutely. Ethan knows I would have to gatekeep him. Um, <laughs> that's the way it is, you know. No. Uh, Ethan is uh, kind enough to not gatekeep me, so I would not. But I think Ethan is probably drawing if he's remotely, you know, vertical right now. He's probably drawing. You guys know how it is. We just, we work, we work, we work. Hey, you know, we it. got we got a lot of stuff launching this week. We got, you know, we got, of course, Aaron Lepresti on Thursday with his new That's Rage right. of God book. Uh, and that looks great. In fact, you yep. know, of course, I'm coloring part of that. Yep, and, and it looks I asked great, you, man. That's the funny thing is that you know how that, Can that, you that assignment came to be. Clarify that for me though. Okay, so is that a part of the bigger book? Like, yeah. so it's going to be in one volume, yes. or is it going to be two books? It's going to be part of the book, I believe. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome! Very cool. So you know, the, then now tell the, people what it is, so the, I can. The shut funny the fuck thing up. how how that came to be is we're on the stream and Aaron's showing the black and white stuff, and I'm going, man, but I love the oh, color yeah. of that, and it's yeah. kind of like you just said. Uh, do you want to go ahead? You know, <laughs> like you I mean, you, you, you're serious. I'm like, yeah. So it was, it was a kind of a weird assignment where I, I, I got it because I just wanted it, and I like I want I, I wanted to actually to, to color it. Like it, it looks like it's just a yeah. blast. So yeah, absolutely. I totally can see that, man. And thank you for dropping the links, John. You're always then, crushing it, man. Then the core yeah, draft the, the, is happening. Uh, I think. Yeah. I forget. Maybe Monday. Or I, I forgot when it's when that's popping in. Or maybe it's, I don't know, maybe it's sooner than that. I forget now which day. Yeah. Rini's on Saturday. So, uh, yeah, we got, we got three, three coming in. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be a big, it's going to be a big week. And there's, I will say this too, guys. I don't know, you know, what it, it, like you guys have to pick the stuff that you do um, in terms of, of work and all of that other kind of stuff is that when you think about all of this stuff, and you think about like how many different projects are coming out. There's something for everybody, you know, there's something for everybody to do this sort of stuff. And you can just kind of like, you can see if you like Wraith of God, if you like fiendish and you have to say, okay, this, the campaigns are going to run for a while and there's stuff for people to see. Hey, Sean, did you, have you been following my Instagram? Did you see that, that uh, Salmon Kane image I did? Uh, no, I didn't. Oh, I'm just waiting want... for Doc Savage, but uh, would you like to call it up and share it? I sure as well. <laughs> I love sure, sure shit and will. Yeah. Uh, let me see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, the intro. Oh, the intro is on Kings at one seventeen twenty nine. There you go. Excellent. Sorry. Let me see if I can share this here. Here you go, gang. Take a look here. Solomon Kane in the house. Boom. Yeah. Although it can kind of, you know, could be Dracula. It could be a lot of things. But. Actually, I did. I did this image years ago, but I I just redid it not just recently, just for fun. Nice man. But uh, I dig uh, it. Simple shapes, and all the focus is on the head. You know, it's like that's Dude, it. Yeah, Co- it's a, got a, a uh, brandy wine kind of quality to it too. I love that. Less you less know? is more. You know. Yeah, the, I love the um, I love Howard Pyle. I love the whole brandy wine tradition and like the way that the light would hit like one figure. They just did some beautiful stuff. Yeah. Solomon Kang, yeah, <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, oh, Dan, when are you going to draw the shadow? See, look, Phil and I are never satisfied. Like, what is <laughs> I, honest to God? Just unloving, uncaring people. Mortal. By the way, v this helps this, this character here days. may or may not be the my barbarian character I've been working on lately. Yeah, that's right. I, so, I'm actually uh, I'm, I'm developing it sort of. I'm doing some, you know. I tell you what, this is this is going to be the look of that, you know, that kind of. Thing. Yeah, absolutely. 
Dude, let me tell you something right now. All right, I, we need we need these pages, man. We need these pages. Yeah, just start. Let's start working on studies. Some thumbnails these are on. these are studies, you know. Just let's start working on some thumbnails for it. What's on page one? Let's go. Let's do yeah. this thing. Well, I say the story's written. It's just uh, I just got to you know to illustrate it. That's about. I know. It. I'm saying let's do it right now. Let's go. Oh, I me mean, start drawing it. Yes. <laughs> like what the fuck, man? Let's do this. I Shoot, man! Just... I don't. This is Gross Point Woods. This is old school, Dan. Creativity do just doesn't. C's. You can't just turn it on and off, you know. Yes, you can. You absolutely <laughs> can. Do you have any idea how many people I've turned off in my life? <laughs> so listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah it's, just, it's easy to turn off life. and it is turn on, right? It's What's up, Siege Perilous? Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen. The truth is somewhere in between. Oh no. Um, but let's do, come on. Yeah, Zade Comics is like golden helmet. Phil, what do you think? Should we start having Dan Lawless draw the page? Come on, layouts. Let's do this thing, man. <laughs> Come on. Sean, did you did you see this uh, Rings of Power thing? No, I haven't. But let's talk about that page. Uh, listen, <laughs> <laughs> listen. It ain't called Show Friends. It's called Show Business. Let's get let's get drawn, man. Just do. Let's do that layout. Let's go. Nobody has to see it. There's nobody here but us, Dan, and 42 people in the chat. You got it. You've drawn so many. I, I'm comic I'm pages. I'm completely comfortable with drawing. I am not comfortable with, you know, putting my story out there yet. <laughs> Don't put your story out there. So, just draw. We're not going to know what it is anyway, man. Yeah. It's just, 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 just draw. <laughs> just, t just work on the page. Nobody has to see. You don't even have to talk about yeah. it. Dan. It's not going to be digital. That's the thing, though. It's, it, I got to get. Yeah, I got to so get over here on the big giant drawing table. I got to get back over there. So we got to get your camera set up over there, man. We got to get you a camera. What kind of camera rig do you got? What I'm I'm working through my iPhone right here, which is quite oh. nice actually. Oh, dude, yeah, I love the iPhone, but I gotta get you just like thinking about those layouts. Let's get those creative juices going, Dan. Let's put it together, man. You know, let's let's do it. Let's get that page mm -hmm. happening. The, remember the you know this, man. But well, you so have you ever done a creator on book before? No. Oh so yeah, what am I thinking? Yeah, I did. I did. But it, <laughs> I love how but, you but were it like... was so it was it was I didn't even think. I mean, I. I almost like detached myself from the whole experience because it was <laughs> back in like 2007 or something this is yeah. all pre you know comic skate all that stuff and i i had been out of the business for a, a number of years and i just had it so i created a yeah. pretty yeah. conservative <laughs> version yeah. of a comic which is exactly what you don't want to do that's you know the, the biggest mistake oh, I remember a lot the, of you people, told, we've talked about this yeah, yeah the, the biggest mistake you make is 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 you know, you're coming out off of this, you know, super agenda kind of stuff. And then you say, oh, I'm going to put my agenda into it now. No, nobody wants to hear anybody's agenda. They just want to have fun, you know. So I learned the hard way that that was the case because people weren't interested in it. So, Do you it do just, your layouts in digital or traditional? I can do both, but I actually, I, I'm kind of like to do digital uh, to to do layout and then I blow it I print it out and blow it up and trace it and, and work on it then you know that's kind of the oh, way oh sweet I, so you can start your layouts now on the computer that's yeah, awesome I could I could so let's actually go. That's true. let's fucking do this <laughs> uh, seriously Dan listen um I I will tell you this you you saw earlier in my stream man and Dan, Antoine Dennison says Dan is that a homemade light box sitting on your drafting table it is right there? look at that it is. gangsta it's ancient gangster ancient so that, that, i i got that from somebody when i was in art school which would have been yeah. uh 1982 uh -huh. <laughs> so that's a little ways back this this right here is an important stream folks tell your friends tell your family they're not going to see any of it but this is the stream where dan is going to start doing the layouts for the first page of this oh. book if he throws it out no oh. come on, you got to do <laughs> rip the band-aid off no one's going to see it no one's gonna. See I gotta. I gotta be like in the zone. I gotta oh, be. Oh, for like... God's sake, man! Don't wait for inspiration to strike. Strike inspiration I first. Got the planets have to be aligned just right. Oh, for the love of God! Come on, Dan. We know we're pros. Let's do this thing. <laughs> just hack it. Hack it out like Krusty Krab. Did you ever see when he comes in? Yeah. No one's gonna see it anyway. You should. <laughs> or, see I mean, Dan, with look. the Krusty Clown, it was Krusty Clown. Yeah, but listen, Dan. I want you to understand something here. You seem like a good person, and I mean that sincerely, because you're actually telling. I seem me, like a good person. Yeah, you're actually telling me right now. Going, I don't know if I could do this. You could be since I said no one's gonna see it, right? And you don't have to show it. You could be sitting there just moving your shoulder and saying, I'm doing it, Charles, and no one's going to be any the wiser, man. You know what I mean? You'd be like, it's a masterpiece. 
my god <laughs> it's incredible i can't find my pen i don't think so. see what i'm saying man it's a sweet this is the best way ever you're here with these great people we've got 40 people in the chat right now and they're they're seeing you somebody whom rightly or wrongly possibly both as they said in that old uh you know dudley moore peter cook skit um that this is the the tying to that that golden age of illustration that's been carried on by the Starankos of this world passed on to us we get together this is our bullpen and we draw and we draw in the light and inspiration of the support of these amazing people who have almost gotten nosfero you know to uh to 30k and as they said on uh, on yellowstone you know almost is tough to measure because almost doesn't count so come on let's get this going guys um <laughs> and then you've got to say you know when you're you're looking at this stuff we've got people who are ready during this time during this window to back and buy books and this is not a door that stays open forever if we don't throw a lot of kerosene slash fertilizer on it and that's the biggest thing i've learned you know from from all of these guys who's come before us which is you know we got to just keep hitting them on the ear and keeping up the skier as they used to say uh and we got to make sure that we're putting this stuff out there because it's like uh and i really do believe this there is always room even though it seems like it's a packed you know it's a packed week for launches in comics gate there's so much stuff in comics gate there has never been a time in the history of comics where there was not room for great books whether it's dave stevens teenage mutant ninja turtles there's always been room for great books and what we're blessed to have right now is a passion active fan base what is up no 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 good to see you my friend it's been a while hell yeah sean's making groovy things in chat but there's never been a a period in art where the fan base has gotten to meet us you know this because we were there during those times where it was pushing your samples around trying to get to that one gatekeeper to do things and nobody yeah. to draw with and hang out with yeah, and we would have been drawn Begging together the, if we had yeah. stayed in Gross Point Woods. <laughs> What's that? If we both stayed in Gross Point Woods, we'd be drawn together right now. I'd be over yeah. to place. We'd be streaming. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I, I it's it. I didn't think about it back then, but you know, it, it's it is really tough. You 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 know that that editor could like not like you for any number of reasons. You know. Yep. And and since there's so many people wanted to, to do this now, it's I don't know why, but they do. But uh, it, it, it's just one, you know, give it the bad look. Maybe they had a bad day. They you, you spilled yeah. their coffee or something accidentally. You know, that's it. You know, so well, this, I think this, is, this is why I like this it. stuff. It's right to the public. It's direct. It's yeah. you know, you can see you know, talk directly to people. Hey, you can literally get the response immediately. It's awesome. You know? I love this. Shanth is giving the Independence Day speech to the groomsman, who's actually one of my uh, groomsmen from my wedding uh, twenty two years ago now. Uh, saying, I've been on the receiving end of this speech before. I can show you the scars. Yeah, because this is the thing, guys. Someone said, uh, someone asked me um, <laughs> once, what were your ambitions for this point in your life? I'm not saying this to be funny. I'm not saying this is a joke. I did not think I was going to see 30. I thought I would be dead by 29. That's just the way it is. And this is the thing I always tell people is, is that I didn't expect that I would have a ton of time, you know, because, you know, things were crazy in my youth. And I didn't think, you know, oh, this is going to work out. So every the time to do stuff, the time to get to work is right freaking now before it's up. I don't want to be looking back and saying to myself, oh, there's this comic skate thing. There were these amazing people. I have this opportunity to make a book and put it out there and show them what I'm capable of. And holy shit. Do you know what I mean? Oh, there was there was oh. a comic strip. Uh, there was a guy that I actually I took a class from and and. Mm -hmm. um, uh, he was a, he was a, published in a lot of papers. His name was Ken Muse. He was a yeah. cartoonist, and he had this one little strip, and it had and this guy was just carrying his his character uh, far out. I think his character was it's called. He had a little packet of papers in his hand. He goes, "Best little comic book in the world, done." Yeah, you know that's 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 your, that's your comic book. The comic, you know, the, the, yeah, the, the best comic book is done. And they get so I always think of that like like yeah. It could be you could talk all you want, but the best one is done. Finished. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, Completed. man. 
Absolutely. And yeah, dude, that sounds really interesting, Hunch. I'm going to have to check that out. Uh, Phil says, wait, I'm 29. Phil, I got to tell you, I want you to know this from the bottom of my heart. You will be missed. Uh, let me see here. Uh, yeah. And, and this is another one too. A, B, C. Those are the important things. Always be creating. Always be creating. That's right. Alec Baldwin saying that in the boardroom and hopefully unarmed. Uh, let's see here. Shaz was an international jewel thief in his youth. Confirmed. Indeed. You know, uh, more are trying because we need to. Yeah, guys, this is the thing. If somebody tells me, you know, there was this this uh, lotto system they used to do at comic conventions, which sounds crazy and sounds barbaric in a sense, but tongue in cheek. But, um, but when I went to uh, San Diego Comic-Con uh, way, way back in the day, uh, there'd be editors there and they would hand out, everybody would get cards and there was a drawing with, you had a number and they would draw who got to go. So every time somebody got, you know, their number called and they had, some people had multiple numbers, they'd give all their other numbers to a group and it was their friends. And so the only way we got in was for all of, the, you know, it was people, you know, putting their stuff together. Then you'd meet this editor who was disinterested, didn't want to be there, and it wouldn't go anywhere. But it was that tough. And right now, this is the time period where you get to go straight to the fans. And you get to make this stuff happen. What is up, Huey? It is great to see you, my friend. Yeah, um, I, I lucked out because I, I had uh, met uh, the guy I showed my stuff to. Hail Siege. Uh, was Archie Goodwin. Yep. And he, he knew he was he knew what he was doing. He 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 was really, really sharp. That was a he was a great editor. Yeah, he was a great editor and he inspired and, and helped and mentored a lot of artists. And and this is the thing. We we're so in the the hole in terms of um quantity or, or amount of comics we're selling. Penguin Random House confirmed this all right today. We are not making work. And someone said that we were talking on a stream the other night. I think it was on 80s made consumers channel and i realized something and phil you'll appreciate this brother is that what's missing in comics how can we compete people say how do we compete with manga how do we compete with this first of all um manga is is not what it once was we're, we're reading a lot of manga from the 80s that's not what the industry is right now slowly over time the three main ingredients of pulp that phil relayed to me that steranko told him which were danger mystery and sexiness have been removed from comics and that is why they're failing it's that simple first they removed sexiness that was their first one then they removed danger every character had plot armor the unbeatable squirrel girl right they could all just be weak and incompetent and they would never get hurt they would always live and the last thing and and probably actually the biggest first i should say it was first it was sexiness then it was mystery we know way too much about these characters. They tell us their personal life, how they identify, what their all personal life. They don't even have secret identities anymore. Then we got rid of, uh, last but not least, we got rid of danger. They're impervious to harm. If you are are a character, you're a Mary Sue, you're not going to get hurt. Yeah, that yeah, is why American comics are failing. Well, here's the thing: is uh, you think about it for a second. You have a female uh, superhero. Yep. Can you show her getting beat up? Not really. You know, you can't even show her. I mean, um, I mean being I'm, I'm, I'm saying is, I'm it. saying just aesthetically, it's so unpleasant to see a, a woman getting beaten, you know, up. So it, it's you, you can't really show it just because you don't want to. You know, you, you do. It doesn't work in a story, you know. So obviously, I don't know, man. I, yeah. I, I don't know, dude. I, I think I, I will give you this. One of my favorite characters and Hale Taylor Sheridan, who's killing it on Yellowstone. Um, Beth, one of the great characters on that show, it's brutal to watch her, but it defines her strength as a character. You know, yeah. Beth on Yellowstone. I not, I do not like to ever see that. It makes my, my skin crawl yeah. a bit. However, it's a part of life that if written well, it can be meaningful. Yeah. But I'm saying I mean? this is, a, this is a kid's medium still, or, you know, or a lot of kids read them. You can't really. Have you read manga? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. You wow. may you may want to rethink what kids are kids are seeing there, and yeah. I will tell you this. Um, yeah, maybe I'm just out of touch. I'm just old. But old. let's go back to the older comics, though, too, man. I'm not, you know, it's if we go back there where Batman was, you know, carrying guns, you know, or the Shadow, yeah. or all those books. Uh, okay, let's go to the Bible. Uh, you know, let's 
like yeah. these are the important yeah. stories that I, i'm just talking about. about like like in this environment especially the political environment to have a woman getting beaten up is is not you know is not going to happen not that it should but i'm just saying they, they they're going to be very protected that's why you're saying the girls are like super powered impervious sure they of can't course. really be harmed because if they were they would say violence yeah. against women kind of thing you know so really, yeah. what it comes down to, they really shouldn't be there in the first place. Really. Well, but, I uh, think this is, but this is the biggest thing about it, though, right? This this is a big thing where we, I don't have a particular story where that is something I want to paint or draw personally, but I just have to say this too, and and this is an important thing. Um, I saw, um, actually, I guess it happened off screen, but I did see Vasquez get acid on her leg in aliens one of those great characters uh pharaoh was off camera blood hitting the windshield and the arm moving um you know you see these movies and i gotta be honest when i was seeing those i was a, a kid right i don't know if sue how much peril sue richards has been in but i imagine she's she's taken a hit before you know what i mean in the battle just like the guys have i mean we're right, talking about right. world yeah. ending stories yeah and so i guess this is the thing i would say put all that stuff aside sexiness danger and mystery you don't have to show violence to show danger look at my piece for um for uh cg vacation available now phil diaz in the chat hail phil um do you get what i'm saying like you can do mystery danger and sexiness without any of that stuff that's what frazetta did and i don't think you ever see a black eye or a bruise or anything on a woman you know it's not it's not my bag right, I, right, that's right. I, not something i want to particularly see but you do see women on an altar and Conan riding to the rescue. Yes. You do see those kinds of things. Yeah, but you don't see her get, you know, you don't, he rescues her. That's the point, you know, so. Yeah, so but that, I mean. that horrible stuff occurs, yeah. Do you remember when uh, Superman took a beating in The Dark Knight Returns? Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. I sure. mean, I had sure. never seen Superman bleeding from his mouth with right, black right. eyes getting the shit. I mean, you don't usually see that anyway in a lot of those stories. But however, for us, in terms of our stories, if we don't want to do it, we don't have to do it. Yeah, yeah. I'm reading the reissue of Fist of the North Star. Hail Norn, I just want to let you know I saw that. Um, very important. But I would say this is that there ha if there isn't a sense of danger, regardless of whether it comes to pass in a story, we've given up one of the biggest things that we have. In Extinction Agenda, I was frightened for all of those characters. You know what I mean? Like, what's going to happen with them? You know, all there were so many... Uh, great story god barbara gordon in the killing joke yeah she took a Sorry. beating there but see uh, I, I thought that was, was a, that, that was unpleasant to look to it read was that, incredibly you know? unpleasant yeah yeah but i would say this though is that before you can get to that point where alan moore could come in and 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 i love brian bollin's work so let's put that to one side i thought that was a bit brutal for that world but that's post watchmen we've covered that in previous streams yeah. but this is the thing the entire period before that, the heavy stuff that happens in the shadow, the heavy stuff. What's up, uh, Aether Line? It's good to see you, my friend. I hope you are doing well. Um, yeah, I don't think you need to show women literally getting beaten up to show they're in danger. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. We're on right. the same page. And frankly, as I've told you guys, I, I've read manga where that is not the case. And I find it tough to look at. Got to be honest with you. But... Mm -hmm. I'm as an American you know, as somebody the end, who believes we're, we're in freedom selling, of speech. I mean, in the you end, gotta selling, make your art. In the end, we're selling fantasy, and we it's are. like the, in, the, in the real world. I guess what little, little children are harmed, but I don't. I don't want to see a story where little That's children right. are harmed. You know, so <laughs> you don't want to read Spawn number five, <laughs> nor do I want to write it. Is that but is that what happens? Oh my lord, dude! Yes, but this is the thing. I'm glad that if somebody. Look, and first of all, if someone wants to write that, walk that tightrope and try to tell a story without being grotesque, you know, good luck. I mean, go for it. I don't think that's a thing. Yeah. But I even even, even implied like like when uh, the, the new Star Wars movie, when Anakin goes into those. The, Hell you know, yeah, the, man. I mean, he, they didn't even show anything in that till still. I thought it was too. I was over the top, you know, too far as far as I'm concerned. Well, let me say this, though, too, though, man. And this is this is the other thing. Right is that what young Rippa said in response to a person um, we may all know that I thought was quite brilliant is you got, he's putting his nuts out on the table. So ultimately what we say about what this book does or what that book does, 
the difference between us and what we're, you know, what we're trying to do and what other people are trying to do is we're putting our nuts on the table. So the Dan Lawless book that has to be sec have have sexiness, mystery, and danger, if you were to go by that, right? Um, that's all that matters. Can you make it work on your book? And that is why so many people freeze up or don't do it and why CGers, we do it. We've got the backing of our fans, but it is like when you view it, when I think about things in those three terms, it gives me instant clarity. Uh, Zay Comics Phil is saying, Killing Joke was unpleasant, but is a bestseller and solidified in infamy, infamy as a top comic tale. Yeah, you're right. It is a great comic, that's for sure. Yeah, gosh, his drawings are beautiful. American Comics Company, if you were to tell the story of Ted Bunny, oh man, uh, naturally to um, story of a couple of survivors is a catalyst of the story. Yeah, I mean, and you think... Um, like Texas Chainsaw Massacre, bit of a rough flick, you know, nuts. But could it exist as a comic? It could in a robust industry. Would it be something everybody buys? No. But we have gotten so narrow in terms of what we do. But here's the funny thing. Manga books have all have gotten just as narrow as our as our stuff has. Everybody's a prepubescent, stretched out person. It's like kids running around having fun in a lot more instances, not the 80s stuff, but the recent stuff. This is a very, you don't see people who, you know, whose, um, whose balls have dropped. You don't see people who have hard edges. You don't see Frazetta Conan characters. You don't see Fist of the North Star level stuff as often. Even in Attack on Titan, you've got a bunch of kids and the only time you see aged people, they're these big, you know, well, they're side characters, but these big derpy naked elderly people like this fear of old age breaking in almost metaphorically and i laugh at it and i go where are the obi-wan kenobis where are the dumbledores where are the gandalfs where are the characters that are older look at that rings of power it's a bunch of freaking people who look like our comic book characters everybody's been belt sanded that's the problem you yeah, know where's that, aragorn that, that looks like he needs a shave did you say you saw it or you didn't see it I, did, I just saw the Razor Fist commercial with the days of our lives heads moving past oh, me, really? <laughs> and my food came up through my nose. Yeah, you know, hell yeah. Well, I saw it. You know, I, it, I mean, it's it's a story. It's it's not the Lord of the Rings though. Yeah. If you if you know the characters, Elrond is not the Elrond you know. Yep. It's a different Elrond. It's somebody else. It's like somebody just took a took their story and slapped the Lord of the Rings name on it. That's right. And so they're... they're, they're there's a, there's a scene with Elrond meeting uh, I think at Durin or something one of the dwarves, and they have this kind of sassy black lady uh, dwarf that's calling all the shots. It's it's almost like a sitcom, you know. It's like it's like a it's like a bad sitcom. So I was just like, ooh, that was that wasn't so good. But they, what are uh, comics they, like? You know, again, this is the thing though, right? And this is this is guys. When you guys are looking at Nosferatu, when you're looking at Wraith of God, again, another book I am not interested in getting that I will not be backing on the first day, except for I will be backing Wraith of God on the first day uh, because I love Aaron Lepresti, you beautiful bald maniac, um, who I I see as again I see him as Brando in Apocalypse Now. That was my vision. Deal with it. Um, but I I look at this stuff. And I, I, I think about this kind of thing. And it's the question is what we got to do is nut up or shut up. We can talk about the book that we would do. That's the terror of comic skate in the best sense. We can talk about the book we would do. We can talk about how we could do it better. And that's what they starting with, with your boy, Zach, Richard C. Meyer. It was like, Oh really? You think you can do a better book? He was the dude who was like, I'll, I'll go out on my shield. I'll do the book. I'll give it a shot. It may not work. But and Malin was the guy who uh, went over the wall from the mainstream and said, yeah, "I will illustrate." Those three that. guys. It was Zach, Malin, and Ethan. Yep. That that were the uh, guys who stuck their necks out and really created a, a, a brand new um, uh, business model. They were the meteor of the culture war. To yeah. uh, paraphrase, uh, I think who was it? Was it Lincoln who said that, or uh, or, uh, or when describing uh, John Brown, or was it um, God? What is his name? I forget the guy who was the, the famous guy, <laughs> famous poet. John, John Wilkes Booth? No, no, no. It was um, it was uh, uh, John Brown was described as the, I think he was described as the meteor of the war, which is to say 
he was the person who instigated it with Harper's Ferry and trying to lead a revolt. And I think that it was, um, gosh, it was a, a poet who's, I can't believe it. Oliver Wendell Holmes might have said that. I'm not sure if that was the case, but someone could uh, check me. I bet you that uh, that Jay Lee, if he's still in the chat, could tell me who it was who said that, who made that description. But, um, but I think that they were, uh, when it comes to comics, they were the meteor of the comics culture war. They were combined, the people who, um, you know, kicked the thing off properly. And I think that's people for cannot, you know, are dealing with the fact that, you know, you can't put this back in the box. It's over. It's out. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Stephen Crane, maybe Edgar Allan Poe. I love that. Sorry. That is the best uh, autocorrect I've ever seen. Edgar Allan Pie. I bet Ethan would love that. Just so you know. Uh, sign in manga are better for mature reading. Yes, absolutely. Um, I want to get his Tomb of Dracula variant as oh, well as the wraparound. Aaron is so good. I know it's going to be tough to choose because they're both those both those covers are great. Embrace the power of and people. Know that that should be a menu item on the Waffle Lodge. Absolutely. Oof. Yeah. Now, oh uh, my god. Now, Shaf, did you uh, watch the She Hulk? No, are you kidding, man? <laughs> I'd rather chew broken glass. So I've seen, I've seen it. I've seen. You know, oh, here's the, the thing: is God. I would say it is so completely stupid, but I sort of liked it. <laughs> it's oh, for heaven's weird. sake! And I think it's because you know, She Hulk almost is meant to be a feminist character. You know, like it's kind of mm. if if there's any character that was that kind of like you would imagine would be a feminist character, it kind of would be the She Hulk. You know, but. Uh, so I don't know. It's 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 so it's it's just so stupid, but it's funny. It's kind of fun, you know. Dan, let me talk to you about stupid and fun real quick, okay? Yeah. I was wa- rewatching for the thousandth time the Mummy with Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee. Now that is stupid and fun. Oh, sorry. I was asking um, Jay Lee, who was the person in the Civil War? who uh, coined the phrase that I believe it was John Brown was the meteor of the war. Who, who was that, uh, who coined that phrase? And was it John Brown they were talking about? You'll probably know that. Jay Lee is actually related to uh, some of the Lee founders, including Robert E. Lee. Uh, so little known fact about our man Jay Lee, for those of you in the chat that don't know. Uh, Dan needs to watch less She-Hulk and draw more Shadow. Uh, agreed, but I want to see him draw his own book and start pitching it. That's what I want, man. Um, I need it because, um, Dan, I don't know how much time I have left. Okay. So huh? I need to see this book, oh. you know, life wise, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, um, I don't want my kids crying and my wife to go, is Dan lawless here at my funeral and say, you broke his heart before he died. You know, look, <laughs> you can go, you know, conscience is a weird thing you know, how it can affect you over time. So just consider that, Dan. Oh, my gosh. I get a guilt trip every time I come on the show. Yep, that's true. <laughs> uh, what do you want Doc me to do? Savage? Is, I got hammered with Doc Savage, now my own comic book. Yeah, that's oh, right. Man. Well, we'll just keep going until something breaks. That's how it works, man. Just, you know, tapping away at that concrete, as they say in boxing, just digging to the body till the legs go. <laughs> All right, Dan. how about how about a, a uh, never foreseen by anybody but me and Vaughn a sketch of the the black tear. Uh, that's kind of cool, but no, I want to see. I want you, you to work you on are, the layouts for the book. You are you strike a hard bargain here, man. I God. do, man. Yeah, some people are assholes, Dan. I'm the whole ass. That's just how that works. <laughs> it's all I know, Dan. It's all I know. You know why? Because this is the thing for me, man. I, I you don't have to show the damn layout page, but I want you on it because I need. Like the whole reason I'm doing freaking Nos Pharaoh, man, is because uh, what do you call it? Is because you know the people were saying this, and I thought whether it's you know could be 100% certifiably true or not, they were saying CG is not big enough to be an industry. It needs more books. Some are gonna work. Some are not gonna work. But we've got to be working. We've got to be producing stuff because this little thing that we are creating. It has. It will grow or it will die. Those are its only two options. It's going to get bigger and move forward, or it's going to fucking die. Oh, here we go. Uh, John Brown was known as the meteor of the war, so I was correct on that one. 
Um, let me see here. Uh, Sean is like a cattle prod to your privates for motivation. Yeah, that's true. Well, I did, I did come up uh, vaguely Asian. So, you know, it was kind of like you tell your parents, I got into this prestigious art school. The response is, what kind of doctor can you be from there? <laughs> so there you have it, kids. Uh, yeah, that sounds like a t-shirt. Sean, uh, no, absolutely. He could be a proctologist. <laughs> Shit. Uh, it was Herman Melville who coined and wrote about it first. Thank you, Jay Lee. Speaking of Melville, I'm right near uh, New Bedford, Mass. I'm right near the land of Melville. Um, actually, not New Bedford. I'm sorry. Um, holy shit, I can't believe I'm getting this wrong. Fall River. Sorry. No, not Fall River. It is New Bedford. New Bedford, Whaling, of course. You're it's such... Uh, I think, you're I think an Asian, not a Bastion. Oh, did you hear this? Here's my brother, my other <laughs> Asian brother. You're an Asian, not a Bijan. Grade-wise, one of the all-time great parent insults. <laughs> freaking beautiful shit oh my god yeah it's a glorious thing oh my lord yeah why not a is one of the greatest <laughs> statements ever made by a parent man it's rough uh jay lee now i'm related to actor christopher lee and um and confederate general robert e lee that is correct yes sir uh, let's see. Why didn't you go uh, to Boston Fan Expo uh, to meet B uh, Bisley? Because it was outside, Phil, uh, and I don't leave my house. I paint. Uh, that's what it's about, man. Sorry, a little deep cuts right now. That's right. You guys are killing me, man. Because this is the thing, right? And I do, I will go to a convention at some point. I forget what was going on that weekend, but I think it was family stuff. Um, but here's the deal, guys. Well, they can go back through my YouTube channel and, and find out like I, that I was sitting here on stream eating a bag of Cheetos. I mean, that's always possible, too. Um, but this is the thing, right? The the drawing together thing in terms of people and artists is something I really miss. You know, we only got to hear, at least I could say this, I only got to hear the tales of the bullpen. Everybody was freelance and FedEx in it, you know, yeah, by the time I, I was free, I was I was FedEx guy. Yeah. Never, never was in there. That would have made a big difference in my comic book career if I had been in there talking to people. I, I know it. You know, it just. Yeah. It, but you get you get to do it now, man. That's the coolest thing about yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. That is actually yeah. really cool. Would, now, would you, would you go to a, um, would you go to the fans for the fans fest? If, if yeah, you, absolutely. I would. Absolutely. I would. Yeah. I think I, I imagine too. there's just going to be a ton of Nosferro groupies there. Uh, I'm going to point them out to my wife and say, look at this, look at this. And she's going to be like, you're into those guys, you know, and then it's, you know, then it all falls apart. But the point is, um, <laughs> I think there are going to be some fans down there who would buy me a country fried steak somewhere, wherever it is. And that is my hope that someone will bring me sawmill gravy. Somebody will help lead the protest against chilies for the eradication of country fried steak and sawmill gravy on their menu. Um, but if not, I'll find a place wherever the For the Fans Fest is. And yeah, I'd absolutely go there. I would I would absolutely go there because I want there's a lot of people that I want to see, um, you know, in Comics Gate who are great creators who aren't going to want to talk to me. They're just going to like that's why I would go down there. You know, they'll be like, what the hell? You know, sometimes I, f I feel with this, these these uh, this woke <laughs> stuff. Uh, yeah, there's uh, it's like a fake fear. They, they like they, and I, I could I could sum that up in how Brooks was afraid of Gabe. Everybody knows there's nothing to fear from Gabe. You know what I'm saying? It's just a he's a nice guy. And he, you know, he pretended as if there was some kind of danger there. Like, give me a break. Gabe would just you know give a bit of blast meeting him. You know, it's it's no matter who you are, he's nice yeah. to everybody. But it's it, you know, this pretend like, oh my gosh, I felt threatened or, or something stupid like that. All he did was say, I want to talk to him and meet him, you know. Yeah, of course. So they so they fake this this uh Oh my gosh, we're so afraid of you. I'm not a safe space or something like that. It's all BS, you know. But you know what the funny thing is about it too, and the biggest thing about it. Thank you guys. We got 41 people in the stream. It is great to see. You. I'd split a pie and ice cream soda with you, Phil, my brother. I'm there. I'm working alongside uh, you practically every stream I catch. Sean, real Sean Crummel. I'm glad to hear it. That's what Dan and I are here for. We're here to inspire you guys. Steve Worcester, great to see you, my friend. It's in Florida. We are going to Fred's country buffet in lakeland steve worcester you just freaking tell me the time and the place and i will drink you under the table with sawmill gravy although we'll both be rushed to the emergency room uh i, I mean, think these guys are making me hungry man 
Schomf going for Dan's jugular. I agree with that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's holy gosh. Like, I think well, next the next time is going to be hooked up to the electro uh, to light socket or something. And I I don't need those kinds of <laughs> primitive means, man. I like to. I mean, you can really twist a soul. I found you know, psychological that, torture. <laughs> yeah, that's Got right. Uh, yeah, I disagree. Gabe would have eaten him alive. Agreed. Uh, that's absolutely right. You know, because we talked about both the difference between pork ribs. There's real Sean Crummel's YouTube channel. People make it happen. Give some subscriptions there. Um, but this is the thing, right? We talk about that kind of thing, but Gabe said he likes, uh, asked me if I liked beef ribs or pork ribs, but Gabe was quiet about human ribs. So maybe that was the fear, you know, that Mark Brooks had that Gabe was just going to, you know, eat him alive. Uh, Dan, if you hit me up on Twitter, I will send you a copy of the Steins book one for you to read. Look at that. So Jay Lee, Dan, I can hook you up with um, his Twitter if you don't have it on you. But uh, yeah, Jay Lee's good people. For those of you guys right, wondering. Let me see if I can find it. Yep. Good stuff. Thank you, Jay Lee. Much appreciated, brother. Yeah, I mean, my whole my whole thing is about all this shit is is it's like it's about making comics. And I think the Mark Brooks, you know, Gabe or any of those things, they're all footnotes if Gabe isn't making comics and with a, ha, building himself a six figure campaign and doing all of these appearances. If Eric July isn't making ISUM and smashing 3.5 million last time I checked, maybe it's at 3.6 now. If all that other stuff isn't happening, these little dramatic things they do are, are seen as two equals. Oh, well, there's this guy or this guy. It's the fact that when you say, you know, check the scoreboard, right? Look at how we're doing. That's what settles these non-debates. Do you know what I'm saying? What's up, Funny Pictures? Good to see you. Funny Pictures Comics help make Professor Herbert and G uh, G Geo Adventures number one happen now on Indiegogo. There there's, a lot of, there's a lot of Jay Lees here. There are a lot of Jay Lees, man. That's right. So Gotta which one is it I'm looking for on Face and uh, on Twitter? Oh, hold on a second, Dan. Let me let me get this to you. Hold on a second, brother. <clears> I got <throat> I got Jay Lee in my messages. Hang on a second. Jay. Where are you? James D. It's James D. Lee. That's who you're looking for. And it is um, at A-N-A-N-A-S-I-O-1. Um, so I'm just going to have to send this to you, man, because otherwise my spelling is not going <laughs> to it's not going to do me any favors in this. I'm going to send the link to you. Hold on a second, brother. And here we go. So messages, Dan. And edit paste. There you go, kid. All right, just send it to you, man. Um, but yeah, I mean that's that's really what it is. Pop's dog. He's asleep. Anyone want to play fetch? There you go. Yeah, Gabe's killing it, making his own IPs, working on multiple highly successful crowdfunded comics. Guys, this is what we're talking about. I don't want Jay Lee dropped it before I or John dropped it before I could even get to it. Hail John, you're the man. And so did Jay Lee. Guys, this is the thing, right? When you look at this stuff that we're doing, there's only one thing we got to do and we can't be distracted from it. It's making comics. That's it. That's all making we got to do. Making bacon. That's absolutely right. God, that's like every... I loved that mug when I was a kid. Um, <laughs> sorry. Southern uh, comedy mugs at uh, over Gatlinburg in my youth. Uh, what are you going to do? Oh, my Lord. Okay, got it. You got it. There you go, man. We're making dreams come true here on Jonathan Jetty Art here at the Waffle Lodge. Make sure you are subscribed to this channel. Make sure you like this stream because the does help with the algorithm. I want people finding Comics Gate. I want people learning about the Lucent 2 Painted Death. I want people to be learning about Boots and Heels. I want people to be learning about all of the great comics we're doing. Jay Lee's Black book. Terror. Black Terror by my boy Vaughn which is a great book, but not the book that Dan Lawless is working on right now. And that oh, yeah. is the thing, man. I, I, am, I am working on Black Terror. No, you are, but I mean your book is oh, what yeah, I'm yeah, talking yeah. about. Because remember, I'm a prick of the first order. <laughs> That's the way it is. But you know what it is, Dan? This is what it comes down to. When we have our conversations about doing YouTube videos, all of this stuff that we're talking about, it is about having other people on the wall with you in what we're doing. Do you know what I'm saying? It's that they, they like, if, if you've got 
someone like yourself who draws well, well, they and does all this great stuff. I love you doing this stuff. I want it to continue. I want to see your stuff for Camel Moon. I want to see your stuff for every person who hires you to do freelance stuff. That's I do this stuff too. It's big, but that makes us better than them at the freelance game, which we know we can do. But the step that puts it way over the top is we're better at the creating game. And we are, you know, Scotty Richard studio after the chicken fried steak. Would you like to go mudden and a giant truck? First of all, let me tell you this. It's all about the four wheeler because that's how I want to go. Uh, I made that decision a long time ago that uh, four wheeling is probably the way because I've only had one minor four wheeling accident and it, it almost broke my leg. So, you know, that's, that's how we roll where I'm from, man. That's how we roll. Like Groundhog Day, you're gonna go off the edge, like kind of. Like... Oh yeah, absolutely. And and Dan, you're gonna be standing there. On, he might be okay. <laughs> and then, boom. By the way, speaking of um, sexiness in the term that that might be more fitting in some ways, and a story that had some some definite Groundhog Day. Andy McDowell is just a stunner in that movie. She is. I love the the gentleman who played. Oh uh, gosh, what's his name? Um, Ned Ryerson is a really thoughtful, amazing actor, you know. And he goes, Andy McDowell in that movie is is an embodiment of excellence. And what Bill Murray's character is doing in that is courting excellence. And I loved that idea hmm. as a concept. I freaking loved that. That's really, you know, that's actually a pretty significant movie. I mean, as as it far is. as it has a has a great message because he. He's just doing it again and again. It's like that's I think there's there's a lot of profound meaning in that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, the gentleman who is uh, homeless, who it is the day that he is going to die and there is nothing he can do to stop that. It talks about mortality. It talks about what actually matters. It talks and about it talks, talent and, and developing talent. talent and... God, yes. You know, what are you going to do with your time? And the only way we ever get better at the way we get better at illustrating comic books is illustrating them. The way we get better at pinups is by making them. And the way that we get better at creating comics is by creating them. There's no other way for us to do it. Damn it. Why is Emperor Palpatine in my chat again? But we love you, Emperor. I prefer my all-terrain vehicles to have legs. Indeed. Can I wait? Hold on a second. It was more. I prefer my all-terrain vehicles to have legs. Yeah, it's kind of. More where we were going. Uh, you know, that just reminds me of um, these guys were talking. Camel Moon was talking about um, yeah. Biden's speech, you know. And <laughs> oh, man. Dude, <laughs> as he's I... talking away, you know, uh, Camel Moon's like doing the voice from the, from the, <laughs> from the clip. Dude. It was uh, that killer. was the it weirdest was so funny, optics man. I've ever seen in my life. And, uh, you know, it's going to happen sometimes, you know. it's. Yeah. Uh... Well, did you see this? The, the CNN took the, they took their, uh, the red value, you know, the red, of course, was the horrible color. Yeah. And they, they took it down to a magenta that was like a pink. Yeah. You can actually watch it go from red to pink. So the stars and stripes flag in the back is all of a sudden pink. Yeah. So. I, I will tell you this. Here's the thing about it, though, right? Is that the there is such a void of energy and passion. When I think about all of this stuff, right, what is it that that drives the human condition? What is it that compels us? That is the antithesis. What I find uh, so grotesque about modern art, funny enough, is its lifelessness. Is its what is it? Uh, its pale imitation of life. It's it's like uh, looking at a bunch of automatons. And when we paint, it's raw. There is danger. There is sexiness, and there is mystery in every single frame. I can put that into. Yeah, I've book. always I've always thought the comic book art was a real art form. It is it's yeah. significant, it because it, it speaks directly to your you know your dreams and your fantasies, and uh, that's just that tells you a lot more, I think, than anything else. It's the the things that you want to see, you know. Yeah, I think what the French were right they uh, on this this particular thing, they refer to bande dessinée and comics in general as the ninth art. Like they they describe it as it's it's a very important unique art form. And right. I think there's something to be said for that. You know, when you talk about, you know, Angoulême, when they did that uh, beautiful uh, and thorough exhibition on, um, I can't believe I'm blanking on this because I have the great book over here. 
uh, Richard Corbin. Uh, and it's one of the best exhibition catalogs. Stuart Ng is, was uh, selling it for a while. I think they still are of uh, Richard Corbin's work right before he passed away. These are the things that inspire me creatively. Like I'm a big fan of Richard Corbin stuff. I don't know how often I've talked about that on stream, but it's, um, you know, he's just got this kind of raw, he will do anything in a story. It's the opposite of political correctness. It's, he was making commentary on, uh, feminism and its various um so i never bizarre. read i never read his stuff i i, I saw it and, and oh I, yeah I, I didn't love the art I, I felt it was uh like especially the women i didn't think were that attractive and yeah oh yeah that's for me it's it's just it's the rawness of it man do you know what i mean yeah it's like like den it's, or something like that or what? yeah like den and i was also thinking of the bodice which is another funny one and then there's um shoot uh dan and then God, what was the other one? Oh, his werewolf stories his werewolf collection i mean this is this crazy stuff i gave a speech wearing an ewok skin coat and never heard the end of it we 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 you know we know uh emperor palpatine we're sorry people are just they're that way you know that's right that's right man but it's it's yeah i want people creating things and i want people building i will tell you this even you know the most basic idea well executed is something you can build equity in. Like you can't build equity in somebody else's stuff. And I think that is the biggest thing that a lot of us have learned when I see certain characters, I'll give you a great example. Uh, I believe it's gosh, my brain might be failing at this point. Matt Wagner's uh, Grendel. Am I correct on that? I think so. Yeah. Yeah. And or when I see uh, a character that I was really into when I was in college, when I think of a character like the crow, you know, is it the most masterful story? Is it the most it's a icon that book will sell forever. I've got I believe I've got a copy of. Yeah, right over here. The hardcover of James O'Barr's The Crow. We have to like step up, step up to the plate and take a swing. Funny picture. Did you comic, ever see the or, Masters, the Masters of Comic Book Art, the one hosted by Harlan Ellison? Yes, I did actually. Yeah, yeah, someone put that on YouTube not long ago. Isn't it? Isn't it that? See, now that I saw that the year before I got into comic books that nice. came out. And so I was like all geeked about getting into comics and I was going to do something great. So imagine my disappointment when. Yeah. Yeah. You because know, I mean, I, I, I got it. I got into comics in 87. You think about it, before in '86, you had The Dark Knight. I think you had Watchmen right in there. Yep. There, there was so there were so many great comics, and I was just like, "Oh my gosh, comic books are the cool, coolest thing!" And then nothing happened. Like it just, I got in there, and I'm like, "Oh, this stuff isn't any fun. It's just, you know, not that creative." And I don't know. It was not. It was not a good experience for me in my first. Well, 10 dude, years let me tell you. I'm gonna. I, there's a show you might know of because of where the area you were in. Um. But this is this is the craziest thing. Do you know the show? Um, do you know the show? Let me see if I can find it. Uh, not here, not here. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Do you know the show Prisoners of Gravity? That doesn't sound familiar, you know. Okay, kids. Uh, let me let me introduce you to something big here. Yeah, Prisoners of Gravity sounds like a space program. Um, Prisoners of Gravity was a show that was a Canadian show that was hosted by uh, Rick Green of the Red Green Show. Some of you guys might know that. Um, but this is the show. It uh, The show had people like back in the day, back in the early 90s, maybe late 80s, early 90s. And it had people like, you know, Neil Gaiman, George R.R. R. Martin before any of this crazy phenomenon. Let me see if I can get this in here. And you go through this show, and it's all, almost all of the episodes are on YouTube. And this is part three of a particular episode. There's uh, Rick Green. And thanks to one of the members. Of oh, I remember seeing this. Yep. So let's see who we've got here. But um, I don't know. I, I think to, for my own feeling that, that uh, other people would find that oh, they were go. immortal. Then, as you know, at the end of the book, the process changes, and he's starting to look toward a life that may be thousands of years long. Science and, fiction uh, authors, comic book authors, um, in there we go. Of, uh, talking about Len made the primary villain of his stories, the yep. agent Anton Arcane, a scientist with a lust for life. 
And thanks to go. our cane so obsessed. I love it when he puts the uh, can the little, little cassette oh, in. I think that just fits <laughs> in with me. I, I, Here's an interview with Len younger, from. I was very sick. Yeah. I came very close to dying a number of times. And I worked with Len, did uh, I wrote a story for me when I did the Flash did Gordon 75th when I think anniversary. About the fact that someday I will not so, see it. So, did a short story. He, uh, you know, literally, wrote, I, I'm incapable of wow. thinking. I tell it. Yeah. It's death. A young oh man. my gosh, look at him. It's there because life. So young. Yep. Is it, really time did, time wasn't his really friend, was it? The eternal <laughs> 500 billion years I do remember watching this show and I was yep. like, wow, yeah, I sure feel like a nerd. nerd. Yeah, this is the thing though. You <laughs> get people like uh, Dave Stevens on here. You get um, all, all of laminate. these different it's artists where... yeah. and writers. Worth a thousand check it out. Yeah, so guys, Prisoners of Gravity, do check it out. These are things that, yeah, Phil, yep, but these are things that exist. Yeah, no one's ever heard of this stuff. So you can see interviews with people who stopped giving interviews. You can obviously see people like Dave Gibbons, but the shows are framed. They did it really smart. They came up with like seven or eight questions, and they asked all these creators these questions, and then they chopped it up into shows. So they had a show on racism where they're asking all of these different comic creators what they think about that. And they're talking about it in a very earnest and interesting way. Talk about the apocalypse and everybody talks about it. So you get Neil talk about it, but they did it all. Oh, like, well, so one go. Not, it, the show doesn't have like an interview of one person. It, nope. It, it, it's it, themed it, and it's really good. It's really interesting. Yeah. Very fascinating, man. You'd love it. Fascinating. F see, look, it's like, this is when, what we should be doing, Dan. Nobody has to see it. It's all secret. It just builds the passion <laughs> for the project. But I, I, I tell you guys this honestly, you know, it's um, why, one of the reasons that uh, I'm so excited to back, you know, Aaron's newest book is because Aaron and Shelly got more than their share of horseshit. I know you guys know this, but they got more than their share of garbage. But rather than wilt under it, which I don't think is in Aaron's uh, Aaron's DNA or Shelly's Shelly's for God's sake. Yeah, you beat me to the punch on that one. man. Yeah, no doubt. Um they created a character in a genre I love, and then they're going to be introducing you to a second character in this book that you, so you could have seen before, but Dan is going to be doing the colors, and it's yeah. absolutely awesome. Well, and that's uh... why I'm so excited to see the Dan book. That's what it's about for me. Let's bring up those colors in that baby. All right. I'm going to bring up one color as long as you continue drawing once I show this. <laughs> that deal, Dan? Can we do that? Yeah, we'll do. We'll, I, I want to show the cordage color too. Cover that. All cool. right, fine. Wraith is so good, says Phil. The Leprestes are great, says John. Uh, we have a <laughs> don't ask, don't. <laughs> oh my god. All right, ready? Here we go, guys. You ready? Uh, oh, hold on. I said, what the helter skelter is going on here? Let me see here. Add to stream. Boom. There you go. Dan, walk us through this. This is the second page of Aaron's uh, Garbage Man story. It's going to be 18 pages oh. I'm coloring. And this like this is the one I told you about where I, I was like, I saw the black and whites and I said, oh my gosh, I want to color that. And he was like, really? Yeah. yeah. And, and so I'm coloring yeah. it, you know? So it's kind of funny because I never really color. I, I mean, I do my own artwork. I, I might use the, I'm using the pencil, you know? And yeah. so this is kind of a new experience for me coloring, but I can, you know, I, I, if, you, if I get an artist like like Aaron, uh -huh. who's, who basically draws fairly realistically, uh -huh. uh, then I can color it in my own. You know, I mean, I, it's a it's it's close to my own style. It's very easy for me to do this, so it's 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 just fun. Coloring yeah. is actually it does take a lot of the pressure off you. Just sort of like ah, oh, just put some color mm -hmm. on it. You know, <laughs> hail it's, comics make good to see it. Not a, not a big deal, but uh, yeah, man, it's great. And guys, if you are wondering. Uh, the kind of excellence that you can expect in Dan's book, which I'm really close to launching on Indiegogo without his permission. I mean, this <laughs> is what the quality you can expect. You know, um, that's there, the thing. It's, it's kind of funny that thinking that just the conversations like Aaron's like, now can you make the lettering kind of, kind of readable and visible, but yeah. sort of not really, you know, sort of, so it doesn't really, it's not overpowering, but it's sort of there, but you can read it. You know? Take care, so, Jay Lee. That's the direction, you know, that that I yeah. that I got from here. So, yeah, absolutely, man, absolutely. And and Unless, this is the... okay. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go, go, go. I was going to show you the then the uh, the core draft cover here. Oh yeah, let me uh, but, hold on a second. Let me move this. This is core draft. This is a book uh, by Andy Smith, and, another and Bob artist. Root. 
Uh, Bud Root. I'm sorry, my Bud Root drew this one. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's the Bud Root piece. I have to tell you this, guys. Um, I as my, I also do not. I'm not a fan of Andy Smith, even though he illustrated the cover to my first professional job, and I am actually a big fan of his. And I can tell you this: one person I I and and I I cannot guys cannot overstate this, and I hate to cause so much tension on my own stream, but I could care less for the work of Bud Root. I think that he's one of those artists um, that doesn't interest me in the least. Uh, as I look at his beautiful cave paintings, The Art of Bud Root book, do pick it up. Bud is the there man. There you go, Sean. Hail Bud. Yeah, there you go. Sorry, uh, Dan, could you zoom in? No, the thing, this is the thing. There you go. Well, this is the thing, Dan. Um, I'm I'm impervious to those those charms. You'd have to turn her around to get me. I don't know if you've noticed oh, okay. my complexion. But this is the this is the thing about it. Somewhere my wife is uh, well saying that's the truth. So <laughs> zoom in, Dan. Zoom in. Yes, <laughs> he gives the fans what he a man of I'm culture. Tired. I'm, I'm ready for my close up. <laughs> I'm ready for my close up, Mr. Demille. By the way, the most terrifying line delivery I've ever seen in a movie. Holy cow! Her expression as she comes towards the camera and goes out of focus uh, is the stuff nightmares are made of. So, guys, let's think about this just for a minute. How much do we need Dan working on these layouts to get this book ready to do this with? Come on, man. Look look at that, what Bud did, though. Uh, yeah, that, Bud's that awesome. snake, the way that thickness of that snake just yeah. oozing over this person that just, oh, it's Our just. Agreed, so... real Sean Crummel. Bud wow. does need to um, release an omnibus of Cave Woman for crying out loud, although that art book is damn good. Um, yeah, 40% Zed says enhance. Hex, Alan, good to see you. Yo-ho, comics mate, Dean, everybody's saying hello. Um, I will say this, man, that you um, you have a sculpt sculptural sensibility to your work, and that's the thing that I really enjoy when you're going in and you're doing your colors. You're, the eyes, the way you handle eyes is fantastic, man. It's just great. Yeah, you, know, no, you can see my, you can see in this my approach mm -hmm. to coloring a face. Yeah, you know, I, I I separate the nose, and I and uh, from the, the cheeks with a little bit of different color. <laughs> some cheeks, you know, <laughs> give us give some, you know, where I always put the reds on the cheeks and the ears and the bit yeah. of the nose, you know, of course, yeah, and uh, a little bit of the forehead, and that's a pretty good approach. A pretty form, and then the smoky eyes. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it to getting a girl that to look good, you know. Yeah, it's beautiful. All right, back to layouts. Let's do this. We've got we've got things to do, Dan. Look, Dan, your book is already sold. I I can show pinups all day, but we I need the book. I need the book. I want to see that thing hit a hundred k. I want. That's what I need, Dan. Yeah. Well, actually, just, don't don't you think though that Aaron's book? I mean, it's there's a real possibility with a hundred k with that. Uh, well, yeah. Well, his first one was a hundred k, so I think that well, if he no, had it wasn't. Those, it wasn't. Uh, no, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm talking about. I'm talking about Andy Smith. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Andy Smith. Yes, I think there's definitely a chance of that with yeah, Andy Smith's book. Yeah, yeah. So man, I think this. Is, I think this is going to be his book. The, uh, I really did like First Man a lot, and that I did that, too. Love but Tom's, <clears throat> we were talking about, you know, not a lot of people in CG doing uh, superheroes. Well, Andy did a superhero, and it uh -huh. wasn't quite as popular as some of the others. So I yeah. don't know if superheroes are necessarily what people really want. You know, it, it's very possible that people are superheroed out. Kind of it could it, be. Yeah. I just think that um, this is the thing about about um, what differentiates us from the mainstream, right? The thing that differentiates us from the mainstream is the fact that we do a lot of A-B testing. I don't think that it's possible to come up with or come up with a formula for what people who love comics are going to read. You know, even I think it's certainly true with manga. Um, you see something like Attack on Titan, which is basically Goya's Saturn eating his children meets Goya's Colossus in anime and manga form. How do you come up with a character like and I, who I love, Solomon Kane or The Shadow? There's a certain serendipity, a certain magic, a certain idiosyncrasy that only comes through the making of it and not through the rigid adherence to, here's my game plan, now I execute you have to scribble, you have to play, and you have to bring that stuff to the table. This did book you, is deep. Did you catch the players earlier when Aaron and I were talking about uh, fantasy and 
Um, no, but I was I was on CG team probably at that point, okay. and then sort of catching a break before stream five hundred. Well, well, the interesting thing is, is he was talking about you know Amen. Uh, a lot of the fantasy and stuff never really selling, but I said yeah. to him, it's a little different now because you, in the past when you had the flat coloring, the red, you know, just primary uh -huh. colors, that worked well for superheroes, it but did. now that you can do these more realistic rendering jobs it's it's like the, the the superheroes are starting to look a little hokey almost because uh -huh. you you have the you know if someone has a, a a blue uh you know you know costume and maybe some yellow gloves it 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 looks good with the flat comic book coloring of the old and newsprint but yeah when you when you start coloring with the photoshop it's 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 just like with the movies where you you they they take someone like superman and they make this they take this red and blue costume and they yeah. make it dingy or darker, and because they look at it, and go, this looks a little dorky, you know. Yeah. Um, so I think that's that. The, the fantasy stuff is probably going to have more strength to it now, or more possibilities to it now. Have the oh, best sorry. reference you can get a hold of, by the oh. way, uh, when you're an artist. This is um, this Shout Factory put this out. I don't know if they're still available. They might be. Is that Nico? Nico. Uh, no, this isn't NECA. This is just a, a sculpture. It's a smaller version of a large PCS collectible sculpture. PCS did make this, but this came with if you the uh, special set of the Howling uh, Blu-ray that you could buy on Shout Factory. So yeah. it was just it's something you'd get as an add-on. And it's great werewolf reference. It's yeah. for fur and everything else. It's fantastic. Now, uh, yeah, I was going to say, yeah, see, that's just getting to what I'm saying. Now, you can... In the past, if you had just flat coloring, the werewolf doesn't look. Now you can put all these colors in them. Uh -huh. You can paint this thing. It suddenly it's it's a new ball game with the with the the processes that are available now and the, the printing quality and things like that. Yeah, I mean we've got we've definitely got options. And hey, I how that, how far are you from uh from uh, printing with uh, Nosfero? Is from printing, I don't know because my goal is to get to 30k so I can have Eric letter it, and I will not stop till we cross that threshold. How close are you? Um, we are 1,000 and something away, so it's doable. It's yeah. it's totally on the horizon. But um, I'm as far as the artwork goes, I've got about nine more pages to do, and then I do the big, out of how many? God, I think it's uh, just over 30. I think it is, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah. It's going to be just over 30, but then the book is going to be 50 pages because there's going to be artwork in the back and it's going to be a square bound, you know, art book for all intents and purposes. So you're going to have sketches, you're going to have the story. Yeah. Um, but it's like, I, I, I don't know like how many over 30 it is at this point. So I just say 30 ish, you know, and then we'll see where it goes because I want to do it, it's really about how when I look at the story and I get my layouts together how it looks in the editing process. So if I need something to slow down a little bit, I might slow it down, you know, in a bit and have like a quiet scene. I was like, superheroes work as long as there's not just some copy of a mainstream character. I agree. I don't want to read about uh, not Spider-Man or not Batman. Hero books in general are my favorite, right? Indeed. Yeah, werewolves are just dogs trying to be humans like reverse furries. Pops dog says, God made Lassie and me, not the dogs that stand up and pee. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, story matters, crossovers, you're absolutely right. So yeah, I mean, the, the what happens in the first book, what I wanted to do is, is do this in the pulp vein. So in the pulp vein, it's get the gist of the story out there and build the world and make it happen. And so I wanted to start with, because this is my first uh, fully painted comic book, uh, one of the things that Ethan said was, um, that I've always taken to heart, which is make sure you get the thing that's doable. <laughs> you can get it done. You can afford to print it with the pages, like all of those factors. You can afford to mail it, all of those things, and make it something dynamite. So my first uh, two art books were 20, paint, 20 new paintings each and then tons of bonus material. And this one I realized I wanted to do Every single one of these pages is probably about two, three, four, five, or six paintings. And I wanted to do 30 pages this time out and just move it further. So, yeah, it's the most painted, uh, most paintings I've ever done for a single book. And it's the um, most painted comic book pages I've ever done. And it's almost there, man. It's crazy. Dan is Sean, doing a good you... job of deflecting uh... attention from his layout, Sean's just saying, runs and hides. Thanks Rocky a lot, Groomsman. Yeah, that's right, Grisman. You're, you're I was trouble. fine. Yeah, 
It's like when I go to the gym and I ask my um, I ask my uh, my coach questions about you know his business and he's like going, "You're distracting me so you can catch your breath." It's true. Yeah, Dan, get trying. Now, Shad, can you move that paper just a little bit higher? So yes, I can. So no, so your your head's on the girl's body. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let me let me get that. Let me get that to happen. There you go. So, folks, today we're going to be talking about. I'm bringing the sex appeal. I'm bringing sexy back, people. See, you now. It has now. The show has sex. What are your What are your layouts? <laughs> Look, here's the thing. Here's the thing about layouts, man. I got to show you this because you'll get what I mean. I'm always I'm always fascinated when I see people's layouts. This is what my layouts are. Like when I lay out, it's very painterly. It's very much about just creating, you know, the scope of the image. Like that's a single page spread that I haven't gotten right. to yet. But it's it's about roughing in the shapes. Would you do? How, and now, how come you don't use any color? I... Uh, well, because value to me is what I want to solve first, and color okay. I want to have be you know uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I want the color to to happen on the page, or else there's nothing fun to it. So this page right here, you're seeing the layout right here. That is this page right here. Yeah. And so if I had like where Nosfero is going into the underworld, he's upside down because up and down don't really have much of a meaning there where I'm roughing in this figure as she's getting um, marked up for this ritual and Nosfero is entering the scene right here. This is as I start to break things down. This is where I get to play with the color. Oh, David Brohawk Williams is here. Hail, take your ass to bed. This is David Rohawk Williams. No, oh, David, we're not doing that. We're not playing that game, but we love you. We game. are the Nosferatu. Yeah, that's right. Hail, David Rohawk Williams. You're the man. And it's great to see you here in the chat, my friend. Yeah, check out Bass Reeves. Hail the Rohawk. Everybody hail the Rohawk. That's how it goes, man. Real Sean yeah, Crumble. All right, Truth, kids. Truth, Justice, American Way. Monster. Yeah. Beautiful book, but guys. Truth, Justice, American Way. Six-figure campaign. Play the trailer every single stream. Do check it out. And we've got all right, kids. Time for yeah. the month. Did you now? Okay. You of course you're seeing the stuff that's coming out of Dave. The, the Dave's, oh yeah, uh, it's beautiful. Um, that two page spread. Yeah, uh, you know it's what I'm gorgeous. talking about. Oh, yeah, my gosh. Gary, it's Gary, just... and David and Gabe are a match made in heaven. Yeah, and, and, and yeah, Gabe's fantastic. colors. I'm really, I love them on that. I just love them on, on that. That those characters, perfect. Yeah, you know? man. Yeah, I, there, I see action figures. Oh, she likes rituals, does she? Say no more. Say no more. No. <laughs> uh, your wife, does she like pictures, eh? <laughs> God, yeah. Uh. <laughs> uh, takes me is back. That, that's the skit where he's, he's dressed up as a schoolboy? or is that the, Yeah, the Monty yeah. Python skit is yeah. a genius. Yeah, skit. where, where the, he's, he's like, costumes and... <laughs> Yeah, it's like the guy finally that is like, then he what says, are you What's getting like? at, Matt? Yeah, and he's like, have you ever been with a woman? He's like, yes. He goes, what's it like? <laughs> such, a, such a tragic thing. The punchline. Uh, punch is line. great, man. Those punchlines. Although man. my favorite uh, comedy routine of all time is a little bit more obscure, um, but probably not totally, which is uh, Dudley Moore and Peter Cook's um, uh, Frog and Peach which is one of my all-time favorite freaking <laughs> skits ever I don't about a that. restaurant called the frog and peach. And it's freaking hilarious. Yeah. I, uh, we were once driving from, uh, from Canada, uh, to back to, uh, Rhode Island. And on our way back, there was, we found out there was a restaurant called the frog and peach and no one in the car had heard the skit. So I did the whole thing from start to finish. We got to the restaurant and they just dying laughing. We get to the restaurant. We go, why is this named the Frog and Peach? My my in-laws asked. They go, well, this is going to sound idiotic. There was this Peter Cook Dudley Moore skit. And we named the restaurant. And, went, and they were just dying. They were like, oh, my Lord, man. This is just crazy stuff, man. Crazy stuff. Yeah. Hey, are you it. ready for uh, your favorite seasons coming up here, Halloween? Yeah, man. I'm, I'm absolutely there. I'm already celebrating it. Like, I'm already... Uh, I've already got some decorations out and I am absolutely ready for it, man. I'm okay. absolutely ready for it. It's going to be, it's cause I, I love, um, I love uh, Halloween because it's the closest people's decorations ever get. And a holiday gets to being a theme park. And yeah, I got to yeah. be honest, like I love, I love Christmas uh, as well. I'm, I love that. I love the lights. I love all that kind of stuff. But it's different, yeah. 
it's different. Yeah, it's it's a different tone. It's it's a more sort of reflective sort of tone. And I think Halloween um, is in and maybe this you know something Jordan Peterson is well covered, but it's it's a time where we get to kind of contemplate and explore the monster within. And I think that yeah. And, and the and the thing that's interesting to me is, and I've this is not to get too heavy, but then it is late, so or early in the morning, depending on. Um, but I have been thinking about the fact that um, I wonder how much it affects people who live as characters online or characters in real life as they play out these sort of woke automatons. If there can be any joy in putting on a costume for that holiday because they're in a costume year round. You know what I mean? And, and that's really yeah. what it is. Sean's Halloween costume is going to be Dan's original character. That's right. It is. Um, I'm uploading horror gameplay videos every Oct every uh, day in October. Excellent. John, just wait. Sean will parry in a sec. Yeah, look, they're just... <laughs> a master... The Grusman, this is a master class in deflection. This is the thing, guys. I argued with parents. I feel like it's a few good men. I argued with parents at a dinner table who were trained to kill me. So don't think you can come in here and deflect and make me nervous. Well, <laughs> I just, I pull out my, all the cards here. I had Halloween. So yeah, I you, mean, tried, that, you had Halloween that, and everything. That but gets me like five minutes. It, you think it gets you five minutes, but this is the thing, Dan, you know how an artist can tell by looking at the eyes of another artist, what he's doing. Oh. And if he's drawing, you know, the uh, thousand yard gaze we get. When Are you we're sure you caught on? Because I think you were, I think I had you going everywhere. No, nah, you almost had me going. But this is the thing, Dan. At the end of the day, the conversation in the chat is still on. Yeah, these guys are page. not on my side at all. They're not Groomsman. on your side. Groomsman is, is on your side, clearly. Yeah, well, that's right, man. Well, he's, well, this, that's a shocking thing because Groomsman has known me for decades. So right. by all rights, he shouldn't be on my side, <laughs> as he's often <laughs> said, man. Yeah, 24-7 cosplay, hashtag new identity has its extra privileges. Um, David Brohawk Williams. I'm no longer David Williams. I'm Cal L on alien, um, an alien from Krypton, and I am Superman. You shall address me as such, bigot. Your denial of this new fact is my kryptonite. Yes, indeed. And we know what Cal L means. And so I will tell you this, David, that is certainly true. I don't think you have to put on that, uh, put on that mantle for it to be the case. Sean, how many of the neighborhood kids have you scared on Halloween uh, with <laughs> your artistic realness? Um, I will tell you this. Um, one of the one of the things that that I love about Halloween was, and actually during the height of that uh, that phenomenon that shall not be named, um, there was uh, the first holidays after the you know uh, demic started. We'll say um, people were not understandably like with all the stress and the strain and things going on and, and all that stuff, we're not decorating. And I decorated the house and like my son and I, we decorated the house to have fun just cause we were thinking, wouldn't that be nice to see? And people, you'd be surprised how many people came up to my wife at her job, um, which is at the school uh, and said, it was so great to see somebody decorate. Like almost we had forgotten that stuff. And for me, this is the funny thing. There's, you can help people decorate their house and that's, to me, kind of what I love about, and I do love that, uh, I love about freelance illustration work. I want to help someone do the best thing. But decorating your house is making the books. That's what it comes down to. It's, it's making yet another house on the block. If 50 people help one person decorate their house for Halloween, that's one house decorated. If 50 people decorate their own house, that's 50 houses. That's a bigger impact for people. And that's what we're in the business of doing. It really is making, we're all trying to build our own houses, our own little spheres where our work happens. And if people aren't, you know, put, you, I get on people the same thing about YouTube content. Just put something out. Don't let making it perfect get in the way of making content because there's no one's going to stumble upon. It doesn't magnify the impact of Comicsgate if people are seeing everybody on one channel, but if somebody catches your channel, cause they wouldn't naturally go to mine and then they find mine through you, it's got way more impact. If people find comics gate through your book, what if you make the one book that this 
group of people. It has crossover appeal, but it grabs another group of people yeah. that aren't in CG yet. It'll never happen if we don't do it. Uh, the groomsman, Dan, uh, will you join your side um, for the price of one? Dan, I will join your side for the price of one layout, says the groomsman. He is, he's bad tonight. Yeah. Hey, David Brohawk Williams, loving that. <laughs> yeah, double page spread, bro. Absolutely. Zade Comics, many thanks. Yeah, that is a great double page spread, you know? That is. It's a great, it's a great double page spread. There's no getting around it, man. People love it. They absolutely so the love groomsman it. can be bought off. That's interesting. Good to Yeah, know. believe me, he can be. Uh <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, I met that cat freshman year of college when um the Andy Smith covered my first professional job was mailed to me. He had just moved to my town for a bit and just for and we had an awesome summer hanging out and stuff before. Um, but you know, before he moved again or his family moved again, but we were at college together, saw me carrying the box up and said, I was from Chattanooga, Tennessee. And I guess I had been in the paper and his mom had sent it to him and said, go find this kid. And he goes, are you the guy who draws comics from Chattanooga, Tennessee? And I must've looked like something a cat dragged in as I did most of freshman year. Um, <laughs> he came up to me and I'm like, you know, kind of my first reaction is like, what are you a cop? Um, <laughs> But um, but I I I met him and uh, we've been friends ever since like freshman year of college. It's crazy, man. Through weddings and and births of kids and I've been out there on the West Coast and um and decorated for his son's birthday party twice while I was on trips out there, you know. And it's it's kind of it's it's a weird thing, you know. It's a weird thing. I mean, you think probably think I'm guilting you, right, Dan? Like, I mean, every little bit here and there, right? But this is the thing. I want you to know, I've been out to uh, to his house several times, and he hasn't come out here once to mine. So that's a real guilt trip right there. Do you see what I mean? Like, that's a brutal liver shot. Now, that's how bad it can get. So be grateful it's layout pages, Dan. Do you okay. see what I'm saying? <laughs> the reason I'm enjoying this hazing so much is because it means Sean has his gun pointed at someone else. Too soon, <laughs> Rock. You spoke too soon, kid. Uh... Uh... <laughs> oh man. Yeah, but you know what? It's like it's like I remember uh shit, man. I remember sending him a text and talking to him when I was uh when I was recovering from surgery and I was alone in the in you know, because Lauren had to go home to be with the with the newborns. And I just had my appendix taken out. I went septic. I almost went, you know, when I was uh, 29. And um, and uh, I was in this room and, you know, couldn't turn the TV off, couldn't reach the remote because I couldn't turn over. They were giving me uh, antibiotic injections to the stomach every, like, couple hours because it was bad. It went mm. south. It Did and, it burst? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, it perforated. And then I had to wait 15 hours or no, no, 50, 12 hours before I got in. I almost died, man. It was a total paperwork error. And, um, but the thing that was sort of, oh, by the way, and I was working on <laughs> Starship Troopers comic at the time. So, uh, yeah, it did cause a little delay there, but the thing is, is that, um, uh, and I was a new dad. I had like two kids who weren't even one yet. So I drove myself to the hospital. Like a lot of mistakes were made, Dan, I'm going to be honest with wow. you. But, um, but the thing about it is I was, you know, when I was there and I was bored, I would, I would give those guys a call. <laughs> I talked to them. I was probably high as a kite on whatever they had me on. But um, but yeah, man, it's like I've known these guys through so much, you know, through through tons. And, and that's where those uh, that's where those friendships happen, man. OK, this yeah. this is not a distraction. I just got to say, tell it to the judge. I, I, I got to say this just so you know, this is yeah. up front. This this werewolf is killer. I love Thank it. Thank you, man. Yeah, man. It's just I'm watching this come to be. You know, it's really interesting. Um like when I'm um, when I watch sometimes somebody do a piece of art like this or like Aaron's work or mm -hmm. uh, like that Bud Root piece, it almost kind of becomes like I, I see myself having drawn it. Like it's yeah. a weird thing when I when someone's drawn something that I really like and it's really well done. I kind of like think did I draw that in a, in a like a, it's like a it's like yeah. a, a connection like it's you're in tune with the person, you know what I mean? I was almost like I can feel I can feel the the, the 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 drawing. I'm I'm into it. Like yeah, that you did. Oh yeah, the shoulders, the bend over, the, uh, the hunched over. That's so perfect. Perfect. I love it. You know. Yeah. Let me let me explain to you why this is killer though. You gotta you gotta understand this, Dan. This is 
this is the truth. This right here, these are the ABCs of me. Do you understand? This is what it's about. Um, and and just to... so know this. Killing is my business, ladies, and business is good. Never forget that, Dan. <laughs> Killing <laughs> is my business. Love you, brother. Love you, groomsman. <laughs> It's been a lot of years, brother. I appreciate the super chat, and I got to hit you with this, brother, because, uh, yeah, it's all love. Charge! <laughs> yeah, we're still having fun. I after like the all spooky these one better, but. I know you do, man. Hail Broken Compass Comics. It's great to see you, my friend. Absolutely great to see you in here, man. Yeah, this the Grimsman and I, man, it's like. These are the people you pick to be by your side on your wedding day. These are the relationships, which is ultimately what it's about. You know, it's it's not just the start of a comic on a stream like this, right? It, it's it's not like when you're doing a layout page. There's not just another page of the comic for Nosfero, right? What this is ultimately about is is meeting those people in comics that you hoped when you were dreaming of what the industry was. Yes. Not when you were confronted by the reality of it and the bureaucracy of it and the politics of it. Yeah, but all I, I that used, stuff. I used aside. to read the the you know sand soapbox and they'd have little tidbits about what was happening in in, in the the bullpen. That yep. was really enticing to me. Like I was like, oh man, I would love to be in the bullpen kind of thing, you know, uh, which never happened, which was extremely disappointing, frankly. But yeah, but you know what's so funny is is it's like. Um, it was all of those those things, and and I was talking about this a little bit today when we were uh, talking post CG team, but also on the stream. All of those things were were there, but they were preparing you for this opportunity. So where there weren't opportunities to do those things, the positive of it, if this makes sense, the positive um, of it was you uh, didn't have to take responsibility for missing opportunities because they weren't there. What I realized with Comicsgate is if I don't take this opportunity and if I don't make something, I have no excuse. The opportunity was there. I pissed it away. And that's really how I think about things because I could talk about, you know, it's that great quote from uh, Yellowstone where he says, almost is a difficult thing to measure because almost doesn't count. <laughs> and I thought, Close, you know, no cigar. Yeah, close but no cigar, and or as my teachers used to say, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. And the thing about it is, is that when I look at at the stuff that we're doing here, right, and the stuff the stuff that we're making, um, when I was in when I was you know uh, trying to get work in comics, you know, hold on a second here, uh, Shanth May, I request that you show us one of the werewolf name escapes me, Greylock. Um, at the moment, um, he's posing in front of Laurel that seems to be saying, yeah, maybe I work out. Which one? Oh, I know which page you're talking about. That's freaking hilarious. Yeah, uh, he does. Yeah, he, he's, uh, he's doing the is, the is the beach that way. I'm an anchor. I'm a hat rack kind of thing. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. This one right here, I think, is the one you might be talking about. Let me know if I'm correct. But yeah, this one was a fun one right there. The beach is that way. The beach is that way. Yeah, that is that is Greylock doing his Just thing. Just need to this, turn his hand a little bit. One of my favorite, uh, one of my favorite profiles oh, of him. That is a far, great. Because then you fade into Egypt, and and that's the part of it where the story really goes. Yep, that's it. All right, cool. Just making sure I've got the right one there. But it's it's this is it, man. You know, it's like it's we. That's, that's uh, one of those you put up and say quote this. Yeah, yeah man. It's like <laughs> how do I word this? It's like. You know, this what I want for people who back the stuff we do, but also who are on these streams is I want them to get this experience. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like if if they artists videotaped themselves, videotaped, not even filmed themselves, and even if they filmed themselves, you were never gonna get this up close and personal resolution experience that you can have, whether it's digital or traditional, you can put your audience right on the experience hail dying days of youtube it's great to see you my friend long time no see indeed brother much love and that's the thing about it for me that makes the process fun is that we get to show people you know the part of it that we wanted to see when we we're kids you can see the imperfections you can see the things that we're trying to sort out things that we're trying to get to work and then you could also see you know, the view from distance, you know what I mean? I love the snake. That's great. 
Well, I mean, this is just all this is all the stuff I'm doing right now. And and Malin let me show this on stream so I can show a little bit of this uh, when I was working. But it's the same thing when I was doing the piece for Malin. One of my favorite parts of this piece is the insane color combos in that skull. Yeah. Like that's the stuff that makes things fun. Now, working on the scales on this bad boy was absolutely ridiculous. But it gives you these little moments of texture and these very small elements in the painting. These things are tiny. When you zoom out on this page, we're talking about, you know, yeah. a lot of tiny stuff. But yeah. what is the objective for John? What is the objective for everything? Mystery, danger, sexiness. Rinse, okay, repeat. this is for John. What is what is the story? It's a oh, it's uh for visions. It's uh, I got a double page spread that of uh for uh, Nosfero and Visions. He hired me to do. God bless him. Thank you, John. Wait, what's Visions? I don't, I don't, I don't know. About oh, Visions is uh the uh the pinup book that uh he does. He does these pinup books. Um, you remember the one with uh that uh, Rocafort did a cover on where the girls on the snowmobile and there's the abominable snowman. Remember that one? I remember that, that was picture. Visions, yeah, that was a Visions uh piece. And then um, for this latest uh, visions, anybody who's got a book with their own uh, character, if John is interested in doing that, he gave people the opportunity to either, if you're a writer, hire an artist to do a pinup of your character. But if you're an artist creating your own character, then you know if if John you know wanted to, and again, it's a tremendous... when is that coming out? Uh, that's going to come out with Godlike, I think. Oh, okay. So you're very welcome, John. You're very yeah, welcome. Yeah, he's going to launch that pretty soon too. That the God like. You know? I mean, oh, not, not, I mean, I mean, uh, 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 graveyard shift next week. Yeah, week. man, he's got tons of stuff doing. Yeah, Dan, uh, he means John Malin, not me. Yes, not that John, but the other John. There's many of Johns. <laughs> John, no, just pure guilt. You guys are hilarious. Um, but it's it's one of those things to where if I I hadn't, you know. Like if you had told me nine months ago, right? And I was already making videos for Ethan. And I, my first Comics Gate stuff was like, you know, I've talked to you about this Red Rooster, you know, art I did, and then I reached out to Ethan and all this other stuff. So this this has been going on for a while. But if I hadn't ripped the bandaid off and gone and, and done this book, and it was, Dan, it's it, it's still it's intense, man. You got to just like you know whatever. But it was it was such a leap of faith. But when I think about how far things have come, man, I mean, I'm sitting here looking at this in the mail with my kids and I'm like, my cyber frog card is hitting everybody's yeah. mailboxes. And I am so proud of this piece. I did this piece probably two years ago. Mm -hmm. It's been sitting in the vault. You know what I mean? Yeah. And but that's the cool thing about it is that all of this stuff, sometimes it feels like you are being helped by hidden hands. The double page spread for John where he graciously allowed me to work on it on stream ethan's trading card it's all hitting and generating heat for nosfero it's really yeah. cool admiral good to see you mason w good to see you so sean is saying dan can get his own character in there if he's quick he's just <laughs> got to bust the book out on this stream just get 20 pages done that's all i'm asking man. come on now make it into a poster uh at john there is no alternative with sean yeah this is the thing right i mean it's like my when i was coming up my dad always used to like settle stuff with us with a coin toss, you know, and it was the coin toss had the same rules. Heads I win, tails you lose. Mm -hmm. It took us forever <laughs> to catch on to that. Um, kind of pathetic when you think about it, but that's how, you know, that's how it goes. Uh, Antoine Dennison, the professor says, well, you're a male, I'm guessing, and you're in the chat. So you're John male in it. Well said. Yeah, uh, up, so there you go. John, you know, I always say this: we're all John, and we're all uh, enjoying White Boy Summer. That's how I, that's how I view it, man. Holy cow! There's a lot of yeah, right and deep, Mason W. And Mason W is here. Hail Mason W. It is great to see you, my friend. So Sean is saying, Dan Kings don't care. You're absolutely right. Just crank away on this stuff. But this is the thing: what is going to lift people up, right? What is going to your fellow, you know, comic skate creators? Is one more person dare I say, grabbing a oar on the creative end of things. Yeah. Because we benefit from this stuff. Like John gave that strategy. Hell, John's ears must be burning and he must be getting nauseated by all this stuff. Sorry, John. It's just how I am. But when he talked about the whole, 
I don't care if you're an introvert, just make videos. I don't care how great the video idea is, make it. Put the videos yeah, out there. That's what most of the YouTubers are successful say. <laughs> just start Just filming. do start, it. You're not going filming. to get better. Yeah. Your grand idea, are, this is this is the first thing, uh, my, actually, no, it's not true. Um, Art book one was the first thing I ever did that was not my magnum opus. It was not my big, important project. It was just the artwork I was making then, and it was the best thing I ever did. Art book two came around, and it was the same thing. And once I got into a groove with it, I realized a comic. this comic book is, I have an idea, the what is the the Duffer brothers who created Stranger Things had this the my favorite quote about writing, uh, their advice to writers. They said, write a story that works. What they meant by that was a story that goes somewhere, has beginning, middle, and end. <clears throat> it's all they meant. And what is interesting about that is the creativity has never been the issue for most um, creative people I've met. It's been the beginning, middle, end, and finish it and ship it like the ideas that we have for as i think you were saying this before the great comic book that never gets done but it was a masterpiece in my mind right yeah that's the thing hey you know this uh, werewolf it's it's almost like the anticipation of it is is kind of driving me crazy his hand is coming out is her hand on his hand yep she's holding his hand you know why no he raised nosfero uh, once they escaped from the clutches of these vampires that killed his parents, and this werewolf was in bondage there, and they escaped. And after she tells him the story of Nosfero, Nosfero's difficult origin story, she beseeches him in this panel. She says, will you be an advocate for me to him? I want to marry this man who rescued me. I think I can make him happy. And this shocks the werewolf. And this is something that is the kind of thing that could happen in Hammer horror films, the kind of thing that could happen in Pride and Prejudice, the kind of genuine, honest beauty. And, and then he eats is, her? This is the character. And then, no, uh, <laughs> sadly, no. Then um, he hears something, as is often the case. He goes to check on it. The snake appears, and that's what you see him doing, frantically trying to rescue her from this snake. And unfortunately, uh, some of the Nosferatu-esque soldiers get the upper hand on him. And that is, that's the kind of beautiful, yeah, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Um, the groomsman, I found out I was a little ignorant about artists. I just assumed all artists can make logos. That's very true. John, I uh, gotta go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, coach John Millby, coach, he's a good boy. Yes, Dan, um, it's his hand. Now, what were you thinking? <laughs> Antoine, <laughs> behave. But, you know, we love you, Antoine. So you behave however you want to behave, man. He, this is you after he, 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 she wasn't impressed with the muscles. He's got to be. She wasn't impressed. Well, he's this thing. He's older, right? So when he meets Nosfero, Nosfero is a boy. That's why he's got the uh, the gray the gray fur is a big part of his character, which I didn't put in yet on that top panel, but you can see it here. You know, gray yeah. lock. It's like the locks of gray that he has in his hair, and it's it's like when he um when he's trying to. Uh, rescue her and he gets uh yeah these cats get the better of him right that's what leads spoiler us spoiler alert come on to the great listen i'll tell you what guys i've seen psycho a million times if the spoiler wrecks that movie it ain't a good movie but i'm not even giving you guys the end the end is whoo yeah i like those vampires there you just those, yeah man those it's guys in the they're, bottom. they're like ninjas <laughs> they're like foot soldiers meets vampires because i want this to be there are stormtroopers. There are patsies. They're the guys that he cuts through like a hot knife through butter. However, they can wound you and they can kill you. And that's the fun thing about it, man. Danger. Forever 42, never grace. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. But um, yeah, his name is Carlos Danger. Um, <laughs> Shoth, can you tone those boob sides down? I don't think it's good for Marvel. Yeah, I, well, I'll tell you this right now, man. Let me tell you something. I've been watching Hammer Horror Films. And the more I watch Hammer Horror Films, the more I go... Uh, yeah, actually, it is realistic that women could be shaped that way. Uh, <laughs> people, according to Hammer Horror, uh, yeah, they could, and uh, they indeed were. But uh, but no, man, it's this is what it's about, right? The reason I can't tone it down, any of it, is funny enough. Um, now, especially, is with that Steranko thing, right? Because 
the and hey what's up joe good to see you my friend just back nose pharaoh tonight hail shav hail joe thank you so much my friend hail joe just for that i gotta give you two things for back man and let us know what backer number you are we always love to uh to know that but here's two things for you first and foremost our traditional tip of the hat And then, of course, Charge! the ladies, thank you. So there you go, my friend. Thank you, Joe. Much love, much appreciation. Thank you for backing the book, my friend. Um, you have probably kicked us over, so I should probably uh, go and check that out and share that screen. Let me double check. Holy cow, guys. This is, uh, this is big, man. This is a big one. So if we go to share... Uh, share screen. Uh, let's go. Nose Pharaoh the Crypt Walker. Share away. There you go. Let me see if I can add this to the stream. Add to stream. Here's where we were. We were at, where in the Helter Skelter is it? There it is. We were at 459 backers. And you have put us at 460. We are $5 away from 20 uh, not five dollars. Sorry, we are forty-five dollars away from twenty-nine k, guys. Absolutely astounding! You guys are the best, and we appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. You guys are awesome. Yeah, much love. Backer four eighty-four, Joe. I tip my hat to you, my friend. Doff my cap to you, my friend. Thank you for being here with Dan and I. Is we do what we always do. We talk pulp. We talk art. We make comics. That is the joy of being in CG. And I think that that's the thing that that I want. I know you guys understand this, but Dan and I have been waiting our entire lives since we were kids, hanging out in Gross Point Woods. Um, we've waited for this thing to happen, and we have no plans to squander it. We are making comics. We're making great stuff. Um, psst, Sean, I sent you, oh, the Bastards preview on Twitter. I've got to check it out, Broken Compass Comics. Awesome. Yeah, Woot indeed. Yes, absolutely. Follow Broken Compass Comics. Dying Days of YouTube. Cheers at Admiral Ac Wackass and Hail. That's right. Admiral Wackass is just dropping links and dropping knowledge. That is what we love. Love about all of this. You guys are awesome. Yeah, man. So what, what would you what would you think if if someone approached you or has someone approached you for movie rights, cartoon rights? Um, I don't know. I've never I've never honestly really thought about it. But um, I mean, like with with everybody. I mean, for me, if if I found myself in that situation, I would assume that people would murder the story, so I would um make them pay for it dearly. That's basically what it is my attitude would be um i want to i want to charge you like if you made the worst movie ever i would still be laughing at how much you paid me that's my attitude yeah. Yeah. it's like it, because it's it's just one of those things where people are like oh do you want control as long as i have control over the comic i don't care this is the thing bad artwork is bad artwork now if, if they go and they make something like um i'm not stephen king right if they ruin what I believe the story should have been and they make the shining all the better, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? It's like, uh, that would be a good problem to have. But like I said, I don't, I always view this as I'm going to have to be building this world and drawing comics for the rest of my life and, you know, making art, making illustration and monetizing stuff my, myself of my own business. And that's what keeps me in that, that proper, state of mind you know what i mean it's it's just i don't ever i don't see an end in sight ever for youtube or any of it i i mean in terms of youtube obviously platforms there can be an end but um i see it in terms of i'm going to be working my ass off every day till i'm done what can i do that's worth looking back on and saying that was a good use of my time that's it now it's everything for me man what is next after this do you know um well let's see here well i've got a couple of of plans for um books after this um for like you know art, you know more collections of my art and things like that things to give me time but the next story of this right now the plan is to do um i think i'm probably going to do after this an art book 
and have a short story in it, a short comic book story in it that I want to try. Um, but just like I did with um, Art Book 2, there was a short werewolf story that kind of inspired some of the direction I went in for this. And then um, after that, it would be because I've been waiting to name this book forever, right? No Sparrow 2. Two. <laughs> <laughs> that has been the plan for how long did that take to come up with <laughs> listen man i tell you what guys I, and people think they put people don't believe that uh, sometimes the magic stuff happens and you're being helped by hidden hands but um when i came up with the name nosfero for this character i wanted something that sounded ferocious and that was like nosferatu obviously right something that had an edge to it that felt tougher and so then i went and I had this character I designed that had this metal, very important to the story, this metal pin through his nose, right? So I, I looked up what translations were for Nosferatu and different Slavic languages, because that's where Nosferatu is from, and that's that whole thing. And it turns out that um, that there was a possible translation of it that was Iron Nose. And I went, you've got to be kidding me. So when... Um, when you know uh razor fist said that he thinks that comics need to be defined in ages and metal ages and he said we're in the iron age because we're having to forge from scratch something new because it's all been destroyed and it's about the raw hammering out of stories not about perfection it's not about polish anymore it's about getting it out there and letting the audience react to it and i went yep like everything is coming together with this character like everything what is, is I mean, I, I've heard Razor Fist. I've seen some of the stuff. He's very, very spot on. Seems like, yeah. But what's his history? Do you know? His history is, um, his history is is that he uh, was um, a musician. He's in a metal band. He's huge time into comics. But he's, um, from my experience, just looking at him. I mean, just in listening to him, he's just somebody who's got an unbelievable high IQ, razor sharp insight. No pun intended. And he has just read a ton of stuff. And so he's written fiction. He's written a uh, original pulp novel. He's writing his second one. He does a podcast and um, he does his own show, Rageaholic. And then he's got, um, which is political, social, cultural commentary. But then he's got a podcast called The Shadow Cast, dedicated to the shadow. He does original audio readings and creates audio books with sound effects really? for the shadow stories. He is a multifaceted, multi-talented guy yeah. who is, is in he, my he, opinion. He seemed like he was very lucid. I, I, I just he's felt like sharp like, as shit. He yeah. is amazing, man. He is amazing. Yeah. Um, Magnus Bastards, let me just make sure. Prince Adam Wack has hearts alone. Yeah. Shant, you should call the second uh Nosferatu. That's right. <laughs> like hot shots part two. I love that movie, man. Um, the first Hot Shots, by the way, was genius. I love Lloyd Bridges' delivery. He goes, when I look out into this fine group of good-looking young men, I think to myself, what I wouldn't give to be 40 years younger and a woman. Yeah, <laughs> it's just I remember that. Up. <laughs> it's beautiful, man. Bretsky the Great. Yeah, uh, uh, Razor went uh, to journalism school. That's right. Uh, Walter Cronkite, I believe it was. There you go. Yes, he also studied journalism, which is why he's uh, good at calling bullshit on a lot of this stuff. And there is Razor Fist's YouTube channel. And there is the link. To Andy Smith's Core Draft, uh, the Reckoning sign up. Do sign up if you have not yet. Yeah, Razor Fist is um, he's a guy who is smart. He does long form conversations. And his the thing I like about him is he is a advocate for pulp, advocate for comics. And uh, he talks about Solomon Kane, he talks about, you know, Doc Savage and all these characters. But the biggest thing he's about is um getting people to understand and being a huge advocate for, you know, stop whining about the culture, become the culture. That's his big thing. Yeah. And so what I always say is, yeah, incisive. Absolutely. John, that's a perfect word to describe him. Yeah. He's surgical like in what he does and he is incisive. And, and the thing is, is that um, what he says is true and, and what Eric July says is true. You know, it's very much nut up or shut up. We can talk about what comics should be doing forever, but until we make our own books, that's the fear of it, right? Talk is cheap. The, yeah, talk is cheap. The fear is what is why there aren't creator-owned books. Like I think you've talked about this before, and, and Eric July certainly was hammering this home. Why don't all of these artists with huge fan bases who can sell a lot of Batman create their own stuff? Well, 
because as we saw with Sean Gordon Murphy, it's not the million dollar thing they thought it was that because they worked on Batman. It's not. Uh, Yep, and, that's what I'm beginning to, to realize is yeah, Marvel and, and DC doesn't have the you know the uh, uh what do you call it? the tail uh tailcoat whatever that they mm-hmm. used to. I mean, it just like you know my my I put you know ten years in comics and pff, it, it doesn't seem to mean a whole lot. You know, I'm really mm-hmm. starting over. You know, but here's the interesting thing: being an unknown quantity is a lot less humbling than thinking you're a massive known quantity and success and not making it. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. So for me and you, regardless of like, you know, it's like, yeah, I illustrated shorts, I not as many books as you did, but I did, you know, a couple issues of Starship Troopers. I did um, a Flash Gordon short story with Len Wein. I've self-published two comic books. I've, you know, done concept art, all this stuff. All that's irrelevant in Comicscape, right? Um, it's it's what you do when you create that that auteur work and how good you are at marketing it. So for me, every single person should say to themselves, like I did when I was starting out on YouTube, uh, it doesn't matter how good I am at YouTube right now. If I want to sell books, I better can start making videos. And to me, good at YouTube is quantity, absolutely quantity, hmm. because doing targeted videos that you find out don't reach an audience every like once every couple of weeks or once every week is never going to give you the a b testing and the data or the the chance at reach that just doing it consistently i don't know if you you know know this man looking at my physique i went to the gym once (laughs) you know what i'm saying yeah hey uh sean gordon murphy's uh one of his problems was i thought that the characters weren't very good. Like, I mean, they, they just, they weren't very interesting. I, I you know, they, yeah. he, he's, he had this Batman he's working on. And so why didn't he do something that was kind of that cool? Cause you it isn't saying? easy to create yeah. those things just because you draw Batman. It doesn't mean like, you know, it's, it's the best way I could put it is, is going to a college um, like the one I went to. I went to college with people who have their own and was I'm close friends with um, someone who has their own show. And it's a huge pop culture phenomenon. What does that make me? That makes me the person who went to school with that person. Nothing more. Yeah. You're the person who is next to Batman. You're the what, person what who Sean draws. Gordon, Gordon Murphy's uh, comic called again? I forgot. Plot holes. Plot holes. What the yeah. fuck does that? They're, exactly. That, that perfect look at that. that that's. that's terrible name he, he wasn't but he wasn't like me he wasn't smart he didn't he didn't wasn't born with an that's impossible not a marketable to name first that's... name and then name your comic book another impossible to pronounce name you see i was yeah. thinking dan no <laughs> well well here's the thing is okay uh like when i when you, i think when you're coming up with a name for your character you want to yeah. think of a kid wanting to say it is yeah, kid gonna go plot holes, yeah, you know. Yeah, no, it's not gonna do it. Now they could say Nosferatu. They could say that. Yeah, they could. They could say um, that. And and I was Fog, saying that. With I mean, you know, Cyber Faust Fog. or Grips, the Tim Vigil books when I was a kid. Um, see, for me, my favorite werewolves were the ones that Tim Vigil did in Splatter. So, like, I was reading all these indie comics. Of course, my favorite werewolves were really, um, you know, American Werewolf in London and that kind of thing. But I just loved what you could get, right, out of, you know, when you watch a movie like American Werewolf, you got monsters, you got creatures, you got gore, and you got sexiness. You know, you, you had all of it in there. Yeah. And uh, I was, funny enough, speaking of, of, you know, violence and certain things, that's why I found The Howling much less appealing because of that aspect of it, Right. I was fine with seeing a guy go through all this stuff, but the second it became a female character, you know, female characters being murdered and all that stuff in graphic fashion, it was it just wasn't my bag. It it yeah. it's not it's not my thing. However, and maybe that just shows, you know, again, a part of an issue that all men must deal with, which is society's pretty good with this shit happening to us. But again, it's it's I think it's kind of just what our what our uh, role is in all this stuff, right? Is to to take it and deal with things and, and yeah, fight. What kind of numbers did plot holes even do? John's asking, did it plop holes? I Someone's mean, got to grab that for me because I am not sure. I'm not sure what it did. I, I, um, but I don't, I, I know, I don't think it I did think it was bad. like 200 something. 
What? But he was talking about a million for it. Yeah, yeah. So he did he did 200, which is good. I think he did. I it's not but, bad. No. But he was talking, you got to understand all these people, right? Were looking at Ethan and they were saying, "Well, Ethan, I mean, if he did this, I should do this." Right. I looked at my wife and I said to her, "God, why is she still married to me? For the love of God, that woman's got to get some standards." <laughs> But I looked at her and I said, um, I said, you know, be prepared. We might, uh, my, our funding goal is 5K. Um, we might hit it and it's possible we might not. I take nothing for granted. I My attitude is I'm going to work like this thing's got to be a smash hit and it's going to be beautiful and people are going to freaking kick themselves for missing it. That is the truth. This shit's going to be awesome, Right. But this, and by the way, the next time I release this book, it's going to have a different cover and it's going to cost a shitload more because that is, that's just the reality of it. I don't reward people for getting in late. I reward people for getting in on it early. Plot holes. Thank you, Antoine Dennison, the professor, the man himself. Yeah, that's at, pretty, uh, 266,936. And let me just double check real quick. I want to make sure I see. So this. I wondered, did, you know, did, more about this actually maybe anton can answer this too is uh -huh. did he do what we all these other guys are doing where they he had it the, the the books shipped to his house and he signed them all and he mailed yeah. them all did he have to do all that um i don't know or i don't you have know. a company do it the one thing i definitely know we did is i think he definitely did a lot of layouts um <laughs> dan i'm just being an ass no, okay <laughs> you know how i work dan dan you should you're gonna have to learn this about uh -huh. me man i'm a nutbag but this is the thing i want to show because this is really what it comes down to so he did 266 thousand working on batman for people to understand this that is kickstarter that is um all of the goodwill of all of this press, the thing I need people to really, you know, know and grasp. Oh, did, he didn't. He didn't get ignored the way the comics gate does. He, he did didn't. not get ignored, nor was he called a horrible bigot, which I think is also something different. Uh, John Malin, with a new property, not another graveyard shift. This is what he was able to do, and as you guys know, John Malin closes that campaign out. And he burns the hard drive servers that the campaign was on, the excess book, and anyone who's caught nearby who knows too much. And this is really what it is. What if we want the second cover? Well, you can pay more. Uh, I'm sorry for 10. I think the problem is a lack of breadth of knowledge. By uh, that, I mean no one reads anymore. It's true. Without reading pulp, you can't understand this stuff. I haven't seen all the... Um, uh, by that, I mean no one reads anymore, so creators haven't seen all of the archetypes in alternate genres or points of view. You're absolutely right. I ran into someone today who said they loved plot holes and were looking forward to plot holes too, and everyone on the bus started clapping. It's so true. Groomsman, zing! And there it is, Groomsman making fun of me talking about layout pages. <laughs> he, he'll be. This is all for Groomsman. He'd be Wait, I thought he was out of here. No, he's, he, he's going to say that, but he wishes he knew how to quit me, Dan. <laughs> he wishes... He knew how to quit me. Yo, yo, 40% Zed, we always say. Uh, did plot holes ever fulfill? I don't remember hearing much. Yeah, I remember Camilla Zong got hired to work on that. And then she left under interesting circumstances because it turns out Grifter is a Grifter is a Grifter. Yeah, Donald was cheerleading him hard. The problem is, like almost all others, they never try to sell the book. Uh, hey, selling the book is not my job. That's the publisher's job, as that fabulous person said on Twitter. We covered that on CG Team today. What the hell? Who One of books that? better than plot holes. Back, no, uh, Jonathan Jennings knows Pharaoh the Crypt Walker. Yes, it's got very few uh, holes in it, uh, but the creator is a hole of a type. Uh, so, Shoth, so, who is who is the person who said that about they're not the two above uh, promoting their books? Oh, this was um, somebody who uh, we were talking about. Um, I forget what her name was, but she was um, she was one, did one of those blind item sort of posts. Uh, hey, fam, just want to let you know, just to all you publishers out there, I don't want you to send. Uh, they said uh, Penguin Random House sent me um, a, a paper on tips for promoting your book and i didn't even open the pdf because i was like don't tell me what to do that's your job and i thought holy cow 
It is like throwing someone a life preserver and them bitching about the color. Let them drown, for the love of God. Ugh. Dan, I will leave for the price of one layout, says the groomsman. We're screwed, man. He's on the West Coast, so he's got time on his side. It's 4 a.m. Oh. here, oh. for heaven's sake. Uh, proof of the previous purchase discount. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Yeah. Um, for your, from your lips to God's ears. Um, 40% Zed, Antoine Dennison. It was uh, shipped poorly. People with nice hardcovers got them loose in a box. Like an Amazon package? Please tell me that's not true. Please tell me that's not true. The crimson laugh laughed out loud. Antoine Dennison, 100%. 40% Zed, yikes. I hate hearing that. Folks ask for a premium for a book, a premium for shipping, then cut corners. Yeah, that is... Guys, we just so you know, we didn't know a lot about Gemini mailers. So this is what we did for Art Book 2. And we packaged the shit out of Art Book 1 too. But um, we actually bought... Actually, no, for Art Book 1, we did this. We contacted a manufacturer to send us uh, cardboard sheets cut to size that are used in hardcover books, okay? So they sent us the hard piece of cardboard. They wrap the hardcover book images around, and we paid for these out of pocket to put in with our mailers. So you cannot bend these things any easier than you could snap a hardcover book. And we had these custom cut down shipped to us to put in with our books for the first campaign. Because we were so, first two campaigns, then we rolled it into the cost with our printer. We said, we want to pay additional money to get cardboard cut so we can get it from one place. And we paid out of pocket to make sure those books didn't get bent. That is how serious we were about it. So we were buying hardcover book stock cardboard cut to size to put in with our books so they wouldn't bend. And I mean, actually, hang on a second here, too. Let me turn off my camera here. I'll be right back. I want to grab one of them so you guys can see. Hey, everybody. <laughs> I guess <laughs> it's me live. How's it going? Let's see. Anton, 20 cent. I'm going to pick my book. Yeah, I'm not following all that. Shoot, they're upstairs. I'm going to show those to you guys next stream. But this is the thing, guys. It's like we we really thought about it. when we were sending them to Europe. We put uh, for all of our French and uh, British uh, customers, some and our German customers, we put um, one sheet of that on either side. Those things were indestructible. Do you know what I mean? It's it's crazy. Oh yeah, my my books from Amazon get thrown in the box and they're destroyed. But we were so serious. Groomsman wants to know, uh, Dan, how are those layouts going? Again, Groomsman, you seriously, man. Uh, and for those people who don't know, I'm sure you guys <laughs> we've talked about before. Groomsman um, uh, has uh, has had an animation studio on the West Coast for a long time. He's worked on a lot of stuff you've seen, and is a uh, is an outstanding animator and artist. He also uh, did a piece for Vaughn's Terror in the Trenches contest, for which he uh, he won that, which is pretty amazing. So if anybody wants to see his stuff, oh, to check it uh, out. he does great stuff. And uh, he's um, yeah, he's an outstanding um, um, animator and uh, and, a, and a good dude. There you have it, man. But it's you. Yeah, you really want to make sure um, you really want to make sure you're getting these books to people as best as you can. And that stuff that comes out of. You know, obviously for us, that stuff that comes out of profit, you know, what what there is, you know, and I think that that's that's just really important. I hate like it makes me depressed because when I get these books coming in in a box and they're all pristine and beautiful, it's like it's when I'm signing them. I'm like, so careful. The last thing I could think about doing is it's like we bag them, we board them, we take that piece of cardboard, we tape them to the piece of cardboard so they're not sliding around, and then we put them into an envelope, and they're face down on the cardboard so that the comic book backing board is facing out, and then the face of the book is against the hard cardboard. So we really make sure these things are, we are packed when we were sending them. You know, it's it's crazy, let alone... When uh, we, you talk about the head sketches, the watercolor, or I should say now they're, they're acrylic, you know, on, on even better board because everything seems to go up in quality uh, 
because that's where we are. But when you talk about the head sketches, you know, like the sketch for um, of the shadow, which you guys have seen, um, of course, I'm going to pack the hell out of these things because I don't want, you know, this is for, um, um, oh my gosh, this is for Aldous. Um, and uh, I don't want, and he's a massive shadow fan. So he asked me, Hey, I've backed a head sketch. I know this isn't an option listed for the head sketches, but could you paint the shadow for me? And I'm like, yes, of course I can. I, you know? I really like that shadow, but that, that the hat's fantastic. Good stuff. Uh, we're having, we're having a great time. And, and I ended up doing a figure and a head sketch for one of my backers, of course, yeah, Lloyd, Lloyd Burton, which was, you know, can you do the Bride of Frankenstein? And it's like, of course. I mean, people, I charge a lot for my head sketches, uh, my <laughs> painted head sketches, which are basically paintings, because they're going to be paintings. You know what I mean? And you're absolutely right, John. Pack it like you love it. Like it's your own creator owned comic. And you're absolutely right about that. You know what I mean? You want to pack it in. You want to hey, slide um, it in and <laughs> go ahead. An Anton is, is spot on. Yeah, he, where's he this one right here? Uh, no, the one uh, he, he would have done half a mil if he did a superhero. But yes. maybe he didn't want to piss off the DC editorial. I think that's you're absolutely right. Precisely yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he seemed tepid. You're right. Yeah, I I think that um I think that you're absolutely right. Um, and I think that, but I'd also add, guys, this is the toughest thing. I I, I want to Antoine. I tell you what, man. I feel like every time Antoine's in the stream, man, the the and this is true with all of you guys, but Antoine really raises the bar on this stuff when he's he's pointing this out. Because another thought I had too, and this is a big one. There's something about these guys, if we may call them that. There's something about these guys where they want to just kind of be the friend. They're not swinging for the fences. Like they want the success of being the football player in their mind or like the great superstar. But they, they need to do something that's a little niche and too clever by half because they don't want to be seen as doing something big, dumb, and stupid, which is weird because they're working on mainstream comics that are supposed to be about adventure and fun and in your face and they want to be seen as intellectual and indie and there's this fear of getting too big and being too successful yeah Jonathan, Jonathan, i think it, what it really is 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 the they're very afraid legitimately so mm -hmm. that if they go and create their create their own thing and become very successful dc will label them as taking away sales from dc comics yep. enemy oh, of dc comics yeah. And then they then it's, it's just like the image guys. As soon as the image guys did the image thing, they were they were you know they couldn't go back. They yeah. they you know they were, it was well of course eventually you know Jim Lee did but um, yeah Jim and Rob did they they went yeah. to um they yeah, went but back it took to, a, but initially though they uh, DC was and Marvel's like you're out you're done you know you went against us you you yeah. competed you competed against us you're you're you know, finished now sean go go uh, gordon murphy has to think of that because that's a real possibility they may say no um Back but, when so he did that's that, why i, I think I, yeah. I think that's why i didn't push it so hard he was just kind of like kind of testing the waters playing around with it but at the same time kind of you know afraid to get too almost successful at it because then it's like then he's really on his own you know I think so. all that's going to change when and i mean this i'm not even saying this is a joke it's the truth i think all of that's going to change uh, their, their whole paradigm is going to shift when they're all working for Todd McFarlane. Um, and, and I mean that, like, I really believe that is the inevitability of this. And I think that um, I was listening to Todd McFarlane talk the other day, and he was basically, it was some of the most conservative stuff I've ever heard come out of a comic book, you know, guy's mouth in all, um, it, just, it, just as a matter of fact, like he said, I went into indie comics and I created Spawn because I didn't want anybody telling me what to do. I don't want people telling me how to run my business. I don't want people telling me who to hire. What's it? And it was like very like over the top uh, libertarian, yeah. you know. I well, you know every, want... everybody flipped the 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 the, the uh, action figure flipped thing? out when he when he simply said I can't sell a female yeah uh, action doll. That's all he said was well, I well, couldn't, what he said I couldn't was, sell it. Couldn't sell yeah. a Gordon. You know, uh, was it uh, James Gordon? Commissioner in the, Gordon in the Barbie in, section. In the Barbie section. And it yeah. was like it was so spot on. 
and, and everyone, these people just can't handle the truth. They can't handle the, the reality of sales. Yeah. So Tom's, that'd be, it would be great if he came, it'd be great if he came in and just, and just cleaned house. That would be awesome. Yeah. T Todd is very shrewd. And here's the thing that's, that's shrewd about Todd. Todd is not a coward, but he is a businessman. And he's trying to build something long-term. So Todd doesn't go out of his way to make unforced errors. Todd doesn't go out of his way to talk politics because politics to him is stupid business. You know, to talk a bunch of politics when you're trying to sell to everybody. Michael Jordan could tell you this, any of these people, you know what I mean, who are, are serious achievers in the business world. Um, but Todd, it, when Todd can tell, you know, that it's, you know, that, that the time is right to speak common sense because it's going to be effective. Um, he has no problem doing it. And I think he got to the point to where people were trying to screw with his business. And he was like, basically, I think what he was really saying is, you know why I've got the DC license right now? Is because of the stupid shit they're doing that I'm not doing. Antoine, Dennison, $2, super chat. Thank you, my friend. You think Todd will buy DC, the DC publishing license? I think A lot of people will... do. A lot, I, I don't know if he'll buy it. I think they'll license it to him with a profit sharing thing set up so that there's no overhead in that sense of him put you know, putting upfront money. They'll say, you make it, you produce it, and we'll split this, but it's not going to be like... Uh, it's a license, but I don't think he's going to be buying it with any kind of serious cash. That would be my... Hey, you know what would be interesting if they license it to the Dio and Frank Miller. Oh my God, that'd be great, man. That'd be great. All right, Antoine, we got to play your video because you were generous enough to send us a super chat. Charge! Great stuff, Antoine. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, um, in war, there is no substitute for victory. Amen. General Douglas MacArthur. Todd learned from baseball. He sure as hell did. Playing in the Pac-10, man. That's how you get it done. Have whack us cracking up. Uh, this makes me remember a great quote from Todd. Where are the layouts, Dan? <laughs> Good God, this is enough abuse from you fine people. We're at three hours. Uh, it is 4.06 in the morning. Actually, I'm, I'm ready to get – I'm tired. I'm getting ready. To yeah, you feel it. Uh, Dan, look around. We'll, we'll chat for a quick second after this just okay. for me to express my gratitude for you being here on this stream, guys. I'm going to play our closing song. Thank you guys for being here. Thank you for your Thank you, John. Always, he's always putting links in, it, in the chat. John's right? always getting it done. Thank you to all of you guys. Antoine, Dying Days at YouTube. John, the groomsman, of course. My brother from another mother. Micra, 40% Zed. All of you guys have been great. Admiral Wackass, of course. American Comics Company. You guys are the best. We're going to play our song on the way out. I thank you for your time. I thank you for your support of Nose Pharaoh. Joe, thank you for kicking us up. Uh, one more backer here and getting us there. You guys are awesome. Uh, take care. Uh, it has been an honor and a pleasure being here with my brother, Dan. Thank you, McGregor Bull J, um, a, a kindred spirit, a fellow artist, and someone whose work I deeply respect and admire. So you guys take care and have a great evening, and we will see you guys soon. Take care. Here's a little something for you busters. Yeah. You're not even learning anything on this beat. Yeah. You think I'm stupid, son. Yeah. You know what I'm trying to say to you, boy? Yeah. What's up with that? Y'all cowards don't even smoke crack. What's up with that? Y'all cowards don't even smoke crack. Hey to you. Don't even smoke crack. Do you know what that does to you? Huh? You smoke crack, don't you? Smoke crack. What's up with that? It kills your brain cells, son. It kills your brain cells. Don't even smoke crack. No gut, huh? Stay gold, you beautiful people. Thank you, John, for that. I apologize. I forgot you were there. You may go now.